in need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street on this lovely frosty morning. Oh, it took me ages to get the ice off the front of my car this morning. But it's lovely out there, it's so pretty. Anyway, don't you worry, you stay inside, stay warm and stay safe. We're here. Um, we've had a slight schedule change today. A um, few problems, I think Barbara's had problems getting in, but don't worry, we've sorted it all out. We've got um, Stuart in with me today. We might even have that Neil Garrett coming on air. We haven't seen him yet, so we might have not defrosted his car, but he has promised, and we've left him a sewing machine on his desk and a reel of thread. So we'll little test. Let's see how he gets on. Anyway, this is the um, the last of our Black Friday now, Cyber Monday. So we've got lots of special offers for you. The most important one today being free PMP all day across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Um, don't forget to use the code at the checkout. S S Cyber S S C Y B E R. You don't need the star. That that's about terms and conditions or something like that. Anyway, you just need to put the code in. It's free PMP off everything. Works across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane from ev anything that you buy between now and midnight. Even if it's drop ship, anything, anything at all. So that's a fantastic offer. But let's start with the early bird. This is brand new. I'm going to give it a little twiddle. Look at this. Look at how pretty that is. I'm thinking presents. I did do a bit of Christmas shopping last night online. I'm thinking, oh, I did. I know I've got, still got loads, still got loads to do. I don't know. What, and um, But this is very nice, isn't it? Let me just move it over a bit. Re really, really pretty. It's got um, like a gr pale grey background with little spots. You, I'll give you a close-up in a minute. You can see beautiful flowers 
um, really sort of pretty pinks and blues with lovely greens and buds. It's got a lovely wrapped handle, like a wicker handle. There we go. Nice, nice solid base, very important. And there we go, lid. Now, the price for this today is 21 99 but remember we are still on our black friday ness so we are going to have a discount we are going to have a discount now we have found this elsewhere just to show you what the price is we found it elsewhere that there it is 25.99 does that say reduced from 30 can't read it 33.49 down to 25.99 on another site our current price is 21.99 so that's four pounds cheaper and what are we going to drop it to? I think, oh, Kat, can we have it for under £15? Because then I could put it on my Christmas shopping list because I think I know somebody might like this. I've got, oh, yes, fourteen ninety nine and free PMP. And because, well, that's like saving even more, isn't it? Fourteen ninety nine, even more because you're saving your three ninety five. So there's that it's got a lid. And then on the inside of the lid, let me show you. You've got the pin cushion bit that you always get with these sewing things. And Elliot's going to show you now. There we go. And um, a pocket. So there's elastic across the top and then it's stitched down the centre. Put your scissors in your buttons, sweets. Put your mobile phone, you know. It's all lined. All lined on the inside. It's beautifully finished. And it's really solid. Nice and solid, and the base as well. So it's empty inside, obviously, ready for you to fill with whatever you like. Perfect for your sewing kit that's sitting in the middle of your coffee table in the lounge when you're doing sewing. Perfect to put your um, bit of yarn, your crochet hooks, maybe maybe not knitting needles, but your little projects. Um, if you're going off to a workshop, absolutely ideal because it is solid and the lid actually fits really nice and tightly. So great for taking to your workshops. Um, storage, buy multiple, we've got a lot of you at the moment actually, buy mo multiples of these. So you could um, sort your storage out in your sewing room, but what a brilliant gift for somebody. I mean, it doesn't even need to be for sewing. Keep anything in it. It'd be nice in the bathroom, wouldn't it? You could fill it with all your sort of toiletries and cotton wool and things. Brilliant for jewellery, particularly with the, um, the pocket, <laughs> the upside down pocket, particularly with the pocket. Um, you could keep jewellery in there, keep, you know, all those sort of necklaces and things. I mean, that's so pretty. Now, over 10% of the stock has just gone like that. So we are limited. So please, if you want this, you need to pop it in your basket and check out because it is free PMP today. But this is brand new for us today. I can't believe that we've got it for £14.99. Are we going to drop it again? No. Just saying, anyone who's actually already bought it, don't worry, you will be charged the lowest. Nine ninety nine, under ten pounds. So the price that we found was twenty five ninety nine, and that had been reduced from thirty three, and we are now nine ninety nine. But then it's the last day, isn't it? It's you know we've been doing this Black Friday for four days now. It's the last day. We've got to have a special treat, haven't we? But that is a fantastic offer. What a beautiful box. For twenty for nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. You need to have that. I'm gonna have one of those. Cat. I might I don't know. Oh, yes, so if everyone checks out, they've gone so fast, we've got less than thirty left. Nine ninety nine, that is fantastic. What a lovely gift for somebody. But don't but at midnight if there are any left, that price will be going back up to the normal price although i i don't i think they will go these are going to sell out aren't they we haven't got we've got less than 30 left of them we've got some people buying threes of them well they're great gifts aren't they you know if maybe you've already bought somebody a present you've bought them a kit or you've bought them some supplies or something and you think oh, I'll, I'll wrap that up i'll buy a nice box to put it in or something there you go buy a nice box to put it in it's you lovely but you know, if you want, if you bought somebody something, maybe you bought them some smellies, you know, and you want to package them nicely. That's such a bonus for nine ninety nine. I mean, to be honest, you can buy gift boxes that just get thrown away for for more than that. And this is covered in fabric, and is a thing of beauty. It's even got the pattern on the base as well. It's very solid. I like that. Anyway, if you want that, 
please do quickly put your basket this is going to sell out so you need to get and check out so let's have a look and see what's coming up today we have as i said we've had a bit of a schedule change but um it's still great we've got it all covered so um eight o'clock now we have black tag deals. So this is our last day of special offers that we're giving you special money off. I'll go through them, those in a minute. There's a whole mixture of different items for you to save a little bit more money. Then at nine o'clock, we've got Stuart in. Oh, wow. He has got his brand new Christmas tote bag. Let it so love that. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's got pockets on the front, pockets on the back. It's got a secret pocket inside, straps. Everything you need is on the printed fabric panel. And now last time when we did Stuart's other bag, totally sold out. Really sorry about that, but you so popular. Now we've printed more this time, but if you want to get ahead, this is available already on pre-order if you want it. All you need to do is go onto sewingstreet.com, click on watch live, scroll down i'll show you that in a minute but you can go on to pre-order and get ahead and get this Stuart's going to be showing us um the trickiest bits that's a little bit under stitching there's a secret pocket with a zip he's going to be showing us that at nine o'clock that's going to be a lovely hour at ten o'clock we've got neil coming in which says neil he's gonna to have to do it now isn't he we put a sewing machine on his desk so he's going to talk to us and make show us how to make a face covering, which I'm really looking forward to. Now, we were going to be having the Randall bag on with Barbara, but unfortunately, because of the weather, she wasn't able to make it. But we've still got all the kits. I'm going to talk through it. We've got some beautiful kits. So it's a shame not to sell them all because we've got um, kits where you've got um, PU and tapestry mixed together. So we will still be talking through the Randall bag. There we go. There's one of them gorgeous so we'll be doing a, a bit of a mixture of both of them then at 11 Stuart is back with some beautiful panels that have been designed by Debbie Shaw Debbie Shaw's kitchen and on the panel there's everything to make um, an oven glove a tea cozy and a mitt and they all feature images of um, Debbie's collection of her cow creamers aren't they gorgeous and we've got two brand new colorways as well Stuart is going to be demonstrating how to do those, so that will be lovely. And then at 12 o'clock, it's Yarn Lane and it's Cyber Monday. And we haven't done anything on Yarn Lane with the Black Friday in us. So special today, we have chosen a selection of products across the Yarn Lane site and put special deals on them. So I'll be going through all of those with you at 12 o'clock because we can't leave Yarn Lane out for special deals. So we have a whole hour dedicated to Yarn Lane deals. Anyway, let's have a look at the website. So if you want to shop with us, the easiest way to do it is on www.sewingstreet.com. Don't forget, it says on the front things, if you can't remember what the code is, just pop on the website and tell you SS Cyber. So if you go to the top of the page, you see that thing that says watch live, click on that, then you can see live. Now, they, if you scroll down, oh, it's sold out. Uh, oh, gone, doesn't look like I'm gonna get one then. Um, if you have a look, there's everything that's pre-order. Those are the items that I haven't talked about yet. It's all there. Now, this the in the items that are in the eight o'clock hour are all discounted, all black. Well, they're not yet, but they will be. So, if you pre, if you shop ahead, you will, I promise, be charged the lower price. So don't worry, you don't have to wait and see what the lower price is going to be. You won't have, you won't be paying the full price. That's just for the eight o'clock hour. So I'll be going through those in a minute. Then we come down to nine o'clock. There's all the kits for the roundel bag. I love it, those safety pins. Um, then we move down, oh, the sewing machine, sewing machine. Then um, there's Stuart's panel for his beautiful bag. So if you want to get ahead and make sure you get it, please pop it in your basket and check out now. 19.99 for the big panel with the instructions printed on it to make the bag. And then all the other bits and pieces you need, because you will need some lining and there's, um, all other bits and pieces that which he'll be talking you through. Um, there's the panels for Debbie Shaw's kitchen and the, the creamers. Two new, oh, we haven't got pictures of those yet. Two new colourways. We'll get the pictures of those and you'll see those anyway. So that is everything that is going to be on air this morning. So if you want to get ahead, please do put in your basket and check and check out. Um, if you want to get on the Yarn Lane website, everything is on there already. Just go on to www.yarnlane.com 
click on watch live, scroll down, and you will see all the items that we've got there that are going to be discount. Now, at the moment, they are all listed at their original price. Don't worry, if you want to get ahead and buy them, they will be dropped when you'll see what the price is going to be dropped to when I go on air at 12 with that. But you will be charged the lower price, obviously. So if you want to get ahead with Yarn Lane, there's a whole mixture of kits, books, tools, materials. So you don't forget as well to put your code in, SS Cyber. And in on the website, have a look. When you go onto the website, there is a section called black tag deals have a look in there um horn furniture have a look in there because that finishes today so if you want to get ahead well if you want to get those before it finishes today and use your free pmp pop onto the black tag deals because we have been doing this for friday saturday sunday this is the last day of it so if you've missed any and you'd like to take up advantage of those then pop onto that section of the website to be able to do that Okay, so what shall we start with this morning? Vintage homes, yes. Ooh, these are nice. So we've got a whole selection of things. It's quite nice that we've got um, fabric, we've got tools, we've got accessories. I love the pattern weights. Can I take them out? Yes. I'm not allowed to. I'm going to take them. If I open them really carefully, there we go. I promise I'll put them back. Look at those. Are they not beautiful? So these are really heavy. God, they're not, they are very, very super, super um, stuck in, I think. But look at the pictures on them. You've got vintage sewing machines. That's all I want to see. There we go. Look at the vintage sewing machines on here. These are really heavy. These are perfect for holding your patterns down while you're cutting around them. For Well, using as paperweights, for tracing around things. I tell you what they're also really good for because they're a lovely circle. If you need to round the corner of something, they're really good for drawing round, but they're very heavy. So when you want to hold your patterns down, whether you're um, then going to pin them or you want to see it, the placement, you know what it's like when you when the, the very lightweight dressmaking patterns and you need to hold them. Or if you like prefer, instead of pinning and cutting, you like to weight them down and use a rotary cutter. These are ideal, but aren't they pretty? They're really heavy, so they're perfect for holding your patterns in place. And they are normally $13.99 for the set of four, but not today because of Black Tag Day. Today they are $7.99. Wow, six pounds saving. That's amazing, that's almost half price. And free PMP as well. I've also got another one as well. So I'm going to put, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it back. Look at that, look, nobody even knows now. Like new. We've also got the Union Jack ones. Oh, I want to get that out. <laughs> there we go. I love these. So you've got the Union Jack printed on them, but if you look really carefully across the centre, there's Big Ben and the Tower of London and London Bridge. All across the centre. So again, they were $13.99. But not today, they are $7.99. $7.99, but don't forget to use your code at checkout. If you forget and you've checked out and you've forgotten to do it, just give the call centre ring, they'll sort it out for you. It's not the end of the world. SS Cyber is the code, but if you get to later on in the day, you realise you've forgotten to do it, you're not going to put anything. You can put, you can put the free PMP code in at any point in your basket because it will be taken off the postage and packing um, at midnight when the baskets are closed. So. The Uni Jack or the Vintage Sewing Machine, seven ninety nine. Again, lovely little present. I think I'm just obsessed with my Christmas shopping at the moment. Keep thinking, ooh, stocking filler, nice. Right, let me just. Um, we've had a few messages to say that your sky isn't working. It's all working fine at our end, so it could be weather-related at yours. So do check that um, because it is working at our end. So we are do we are definitely sending it out. It could be due to weather. So if you you know you might might have to try and watch online instead. I know it happens to mine all the time. I get interrupted. Failure. You think all right? 
All right, it's just a bit of wind. That happens quite, quite a bit of wind. I live on top of a hill. Um, so those are the pattern weights, seven ninety nine. So if you want those, we're not having any other, there are no other pattern weights in um, our black tag deal. So if you want those, you need to check out on them. Oudicoot. I've never seen Odico. It's strange, is not in a black, I've, I've never seen, I've never seen Odico in a special discounted deal because this is one of our standard basic products. So it's really nice to see something that is, um, you know, a standard, a useful thing that's put in a sale. It's not just something that we're just trying to um, sell off because quite often with the Black Friday, you get a bit disappointed. You think, oh, it's just things they're trying to get rid of. But this is not. This is one of our standard items and extremely popular. It is brilliant. If you haven't come across it before, it's a liquid, like quite a gloopy white liquid. Look, looks a bit like jelly. See? And um, you just paint it onto fabric and it becomes waterproof. It depends how many coats you put on. You can paint it onto fabric before you sew it. So you can paint it on, obviously wait for it to dry, then cut it and sew it. Or if you've made something from fabric already, maybe you've made like a wash bag and you want the outside to be waterproof, you can paint it on after you've finished it. You can do it either way. If you do it before you finish, you can still sew through it. The more layers you put on, the more waterproof it comes. So if you put one layer on, it's just a light covering, it's sort of splash resistant. If you keep going, it can become like oil cloth, completely you know, water resistant. It is amazing. Very easy, you can put it on with a paintbrush or you can put it on with a card. Um, all message, just ordered the sewing basket, didn't realise there was a free PMP code. Rang the call centre and the lovely there lady there added it for me. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, thank you so much. It's really nice to have messages like that because I said if you if you do forget to put the things on, then do give the call centre there. They're really helpful. They will sort it out for you. It's not it's not that if you've done it, you that's it. So thank you for the message because it's really nice, you know, for other people just to see what a wonderful call centre we have. So this is normally fourteen ninety nine. It lasts for ages. I've used it absolutely loads. I I usually paint it on afterwards. I feel like it kind of waterproofs and seals the seams as well, but you can do it either way. But if you haven't got any waterproof fabric or you just want something to be a bit splash proof, maybe you've made a bag and you just want the bottom of it, the base section to be waterproof, you could just paint that. It does change the feel of the fabric slightly, but it doesn't make it super stiff. It, make, it feels slightly different, but you can just paint it onto sections. Um, brilliant for kids' aprons pockets, all that sort of thing, tablecloths. Maybe you've made some table mats, patchwork table mats. You think, I'd like to be able to just wipe these clean without having to put them in the washing machine every time. This is great. You can also put it in the washing machine as well. I'll put the lid on before I pour it over there. So if you put, yeah, one coat is a matte finish and two or more coats gives you a shiny finish. So you can just experiment with it. It actually doesn't take that long to dry. So if you're not sure, have a go on other fabric. Now, when you put it on, it looks really milky, but it dries clear. I did worry about that to start with. That's quite interesting. Isn't it? it says it's good for um, things like jeans. You could just paint your knees, couldn't you? And your gardening trousers. Normally, fourteen ninety nine, but today... Today, special price. Today, it's eleven ninety nine. Amazing, eleven ninety nine. Two hundred and fifty mils of eau de coat. Honestly, it is brilliant. A lot of people use it for collages as well. So if you've made a collage of lots of pieces, it sort of um, makes it a bit stronger. There we go. Eau de coat. Eleven ninety nine. But only today, at midnight, the price will go back to 14.99 there's multiples of you but it does go a long way i remember when we first ever had this i thought i'm gonna have a go i can't believe that works it is amazing there are directions on there how to use it i've just used a paintbrush but you can use like an old credit card to sort of smooth it on as well but um, we have done demos with it before but paintbrush i found works absolutely fine there's loads of you have got this in your basket so please do check out because you know you know that if somebody else has it in their basket and check out, it will come out of yours. Don't forget to use your code. Any problems, phone the call centre. Right. Free piece SS Cyber is your code. Stabiliser starter set. 
I haven't seen this one in the sale either. Now, if you haven't used stabilizers before, this is brilliant. Or if you want to use small amounts, or you're not really sure what to use, this is a fantastic set because you've got a little bit of everything. It's, um, I'm not going to open the whole pack, but it's all different colours, all in there. Um, they each piece is, well, they're, they're different sizes actually. The, then they're about 30 by 60, 30 by 40, 24 by 20, about that size for each piece. So it's split into three sections, tearaways, washaways and cutaways. So it depends what you want to do. Some, well, some people often use this, say, for machine embroidery or hand embroidery, where you're working on a fabric that needs a little bit more stability. So say you wanted to embroider onto a T-shirt and it would stretch. If you put your stabiliser on underneath it or on top of it first, it holds it um, stiffer so then you can stitch on it. Or if you're doing a plique on something. Or if you just need an ex a little bit of extra strength on, on an item. These are stabilised. I mean, the cutaway ones, they can be used as an interfacing, but it's more to stabilise a piece of fabric before you do any work on it. And it depends how you want to do it. So there's the tearaway ones, cotton soft, cotton soft black, cotton stable and cotton fixed. So basically you um, put this on the back of the fabric, you can then um, do all your embroidery and then you tear, or on the, the front of the fabric either, and then you tear it away afterwards. There's a whole section of washaways. These are brilliant because once you, and these are all different levels, so you've got the film ultra plus and fix, so it depends what level. There is um, a booklet in here that explains it all to you, how it works. So once you've done your embroidery or applique, you simply immerse the fabric into water and it all disappears, which is brilliant. So say you're embroidering on fleece, for example, how on earth do you transfer a design? Maybe you want to write, embroider someone's name onto a fleece blanket or onto a hoodie or something. How do you write, draw on that to be able to embroider on top of it? Almost impossible. So you draw on this wash away stabiliser. You then put that onto the fabric, stitch through that, wash it away, magic. Then there's the, then there's the cutaways and they work in, in the same way as the tearaways, but you cut them away afterwards. So the booklet inside explains what to do. But these are brilliant. If you've not used stabilizers before, you like the idea of embroidering or appliqueing onto other things, then this is a brilliant set to get you started. Now, normally the full price is $10.99, which is a really good price for 12 pieces of stabilizer. $8.99 today. That's amazing. Because once you've had a go and you know what you want, because quite often we're embroidering small pieces, it's a really, really economical way of trying things out to see what works for you, what works for different people. I often see questions saying, oh, I don't know what to use, which, should I use a stiff one? Should I use cutaway, tearaway? If you've got this packet, you can have a go of all of them. And all the instructions are included in here. So you can have a lovely day, get all the stablers out, try them all on different things, and then you'll know what you like and what you don't like. It's taken me years of going through stabilizers to work out which ones work for what I want to do, but they're all in there. And they're all in different colors as well. Well, you've got the white and the black, which is really useful. There we go. Loads have gone into baskets. Please remember to check out though and don't forget to use your um, code SS Cyber. SS Cyber, C Y B E R. Wonder Clips. Wonder Clips. We love Wonder Clips. These are all sealed, so I'm not going to take them out. But I've got some here. Now, these will be in my top five useful things. There was something else the other day I said that was in my top five useful things. Friction pen, clips, bias binding maker. Oh, and my prim turning tool. That was what I said the other day. But these are just fantastic. So in the box, there are 50. Now, this is great. I have three boxes of these. I know that's ridiculous, but I use loads of them. Um, this is what they look like. All different colours. They're really strong and really stable, and I can absolutely assure you of that because I drop these all the time and I find them in the dog's mouth. She's always walking around with them, and they never break. But whereas clothes pegs, she often chews them and they break. These never break. I can take them out and they're still in one piece. I wouldn't even say that that was like my test, my way of testing. I just, she's just always doing it. So these are great. If you want to pin something 
that you can't pin because A, maybe it's too thick, like it's jeans, denim. Maybe you can't because it's PU, it's um, oil cloth. Um, maybe it's very delicate, like a lawn, so that you can't do it. Or maybe you just don't want to mark the fabric, like a velvet or a satin. These are perfect. Um, they're really useful for because you can, if you clip two pieces together, you're doing it from both sides. So I use them a lot when I'm um, doing binding. So maybe if I've sewn the binding on one side and I turn it round to the other side for top stitching, you can clip all the way round. They're brilliant for adding circles. If you're doing like the circles on the bottom of a bag, you can put lots in. Um, they're great for sewing up knitting and crochet because pins get lost. When you sew, if say you're sewing the two side pieces or the sleeves together, the pins get lost, but you can clip with these. They also have little markings on the inside. Honestly, they are just the best thing. They're really good for holding together the top of like coffee packets or sweets and things. Very useful in the kitchen. Oh, we're limited of these now. Now, only nine boxes left. So full price, $28.99. How much, how much are we going to take off, Kat? No, $19.99 for Clover. Honestly, and these are the ones I use. They are absolutely brilliant and destructive. Well, I won't guarantee they're destructive proof, but my dog can't chew them, so. Um, $19.99. We've only got nine boxes left. And remember, it is free PMP all day. That is fantastic. And I can personally tell you, guarantee how lovely those are. I'll add them to my top five useful gadgets. Oh, let's put those back. I thought, I mean, I've told you four. I'm still thinking about the fifth one now because I've only got one left. Those are my definite four. Wonder clips, okay? Right. Please to keep going through for those. We are very, very limited on those now. So if you want them, you need to put them in your basket. Don't forget to add the free PMP. SS Cyber, C Y B E R. Fabric pens, another great present. These are for, funnily enough, marking fabric. And they are fully washable. And they are permanent as well. Now you can use these for, we've had various panels, colour me in panels where they're sort of black and white and you fill them in. But they're really good, K brilliant for kids obviously. You can buy them a white t-shirt, nice present for somebody, white t-shirt, packet of these pens and they can make their own design. You can use them for colouring in um, little trainers and plimsolls, there's a picture of hats, bags. Lovely thing to do sometimes if you get a children to do a drawing and then they can colour it in themselves and then you can um, fix it on fantastic a, a nice piece way of keeping a permanent record of their artwork but you can use it for yourself as well so maybe you want to um, write a picture write a name or something or personalize something um, they're quick drying odorless I think you you press them afterwards oh no it does not need fixing by ironing apply the fabric paint to the dried fabric and leave to dry on a flat surface at least 12 hours can be machine washed at 40 degrees there we go but um, what a lovely way of, if you had like a cotton tote bag, of keeping hold of your children's artwork. So these are normally twelve ninety nine. You get ten in there. That's one of every colour. Eight ninety nine. That's brilliant, isn't it? Eight ninety nine for a pack of ten. Very very popular. We have sold them a lot with our black and white colouring in panels. Um, which children love, but again, that's a really nice thing to put in someone's stocking, whether it's a child or an adult. Everyone likes to personalise and colour in their things. Colour in your sneakers. Sneakers! Let's picture on there. I think that's a great idea. You know when, you, you know, when your white um, plimsolls have gone a bit grey, make them purple. Really lovely way to keep the children busy as well because they can colour in things. And it's just, it's nice that they can personalise their own things. They could um, write their name, write, draw pictures over there, give them a white pillowcase, put their name on it, they can draw their own pictures and they'd love that. They'd have their very own pillowcase in their bedroom. Anyway, 8 99 please do check out because the price will go back up at midnight to 12 99 Message from Alison. Just to say, I didn't see the code before I bought two work boxes. I rang the call centre, got through straight away, took the PMP off. Thanks, Alison. Oh, thank you for that message. That's lovely. I told you, these call centre are brilliant, aren't they? If you do forget about the PMP, don't worry, give the call centre a ring. They will sort it out for you. 
or if you're going to buy something else you can add it on later because you won't be charged until midnight anyway so if you buy something else you can put it on later you you can have put things in your basket then put the p and p code in and it will still take stuff off your whole basket um just want to go through the website just to remind you don't click okay make sure when you're going to when you wanted to watch you click on the watch live bit at the top the one that's going flashing green at the moment that's how you get through you need to click on watch live that's how you get through to well all the products that are on yeah if you click on the the tv screen bit or the other button that won't let you in you need to go on to watch live which is on the top thing that will then bring up all the products that i'm talking about today that we've got there so that you can easily go back and pick up some that you've missed so you need to be on watch live in order to shop there we go so do check out on those fantastic idea the tapestry the embroidery frames i haven't seen these in clearance so we have a seat frame and a table clamp my favorite one's the seat frame actually so i'll get that out i'm going to get him out is that all right I'm not using fabric scissors to cut the sellotape. <laughs> ah. Do not use fabric scissors for cutting paper unless they're not yours. <laughs> These are fab. If you like embroidery and you used to using a frame or you haven't used a frame, these are just brilliant because they are so portable. Really nice big ring so that you can actually use them for quilting as well if you want. If you're using from embroidery, mount the fabric in it. What you do is take the outer ring off and the inner ring. Um, then you put your fabric over the inner ring and then put your outer ring on top. You can undo the screw, make sure that's quite loose. Then tighten it and do up the screw. If you're doing embroidery, make sure it's drum, drum taut so that you don't distort it. If you're doing quilting, a little bit looser because you need to be able to get in and out and it's you don't distort the fabric. Anyway, so mount all of it in there. Then it comes with the parts to screw into the bottom. So that one screws in into there. And then that goes in there. And then that goes on there like so. And then it has all the screws in there for attaching. I won't take those out, but for attaching that in there. Then what you do, so you could use this because it will tilt a bit. You could use this on the table. But what it's designed for is this bit is where it goes. And this you sit on. So that goes under your bottom. So when you're sitting on the sofa or on a chair and you want to do some embroidery and you haven't got a, ta a side table nearby that you can clamp onto, you sit on this and that holds it, holds it still. Now, obviously, it folds it very quickly and easily collapses so you can then store it away. But it's absolutely perfect. It makes such a difference to your embroidery or your quilting because suddenly you've got two hands because you're using so... Because when you're doing normal embroidery, you've got one hand at the top and, you, and you're having to hold the fabric with one hand, so you're having to keep coming underneath. But when you're doing embroidery with a seat frame or a table frame, you've got two hands, so you can have one coming up from the bottom and one coming up from the top. Much, much quicker, much more accurate. And the seat frame is brilliant because you're, you provide the stabilisation for it. So the, if, if you want the table frame, if you're more used to maybe sitting... Oh, gosh, yes, sorry, we haven't even dropped the price of this one yet. But I'm getting carried away. So normally that's twenty-seven ninety-nine, which is brilliant because it is beech wood. It's a beautiful quality. But £5 off, £22.99. And free P&P, &P, that's fantastic, isn't it? £22.99. And it is a lovely, lovely frame. These are really, really, really good quality. It's um, 25 centimetres diameter across the frame in case you needed to know that but it is lovely and a lot of embroidery frames don't have the same um, depth so which is great for this because it does mean that you can use it for quilting as well if you're quilting small areas not everyone likes to work in a frame with quilting but if you do this is really useful for that but really easy to assemble as well loads of you have this in your basket you really do need to check out because we will we will sell out. We've got a review. What was a bit sceptical 
but it really is a great tool. And no, it is, honestly, because I've used it. I took one home once to have a go, and it is brilliant, and I love my embroidery. Um, it's marvellous. Love it. Thank you. That's a great view. It is. It is really, really good. I, I just like the fact that it's so easy because you provide the stabilisation. So wherever you are and you're sitting, to have your hands free makes such a difference when you're working on whether it's needlepoint, um, crewel work, embroidery, cross stitch. Um, only nine left. Only nine left. Quilting. So please do check out because we are limited in stock of that. Uh, we have got more people who have this in their basket than we actually have in stock now, so please do check out. It is a great thing, lovely present for somebody as well. But if you want, we have another one, the table climb. So if, you're, if you prefer to sit um, at a table or near a table or you've got maybe a small table near you where you work and you want to um, clamp on that, this works in exactly the same way except it clamps to the table. Let me show you. So, I mean, they, it won't work. Mm, it do, not really. It's not designed for a kitchen work surface. Is, this isn't a kitchen work. Well, it is a kitchen work surface. Not as thick as this. I mean, it's it is. It's got a nice depth in it anyway. It works in exactly the same way. It's, so you put the um, the frame in like that. Mm. Hang on. Drop the clamp. One moment. <laughs> and then that goes in there like this. You can change the height of that as well. Um, and then you've obviously got all the screws that you can put it in. It does, this one is also um, adjustable, so you can change the tilt of it. And then this then, this bit here, clamps around the table. So if you prefer to sit at a table, or near a table, if you've got a lower table and that's how you'd prefer to do it, then this is the one for you. Um, again, it's got the 10 inch, 25 centimetre hoop. It's all adjustable. The hoop is exactly the same as the other one. You just have to decide whether you want a seat one. So what's this one? $24.99. Oh, we need to drop the price on this one then, because that's not fair otherwise. $19.99 for this one today. Honestly, if you do cross stitch, embroidery, needlepoint, quilting, then it will make quite a difference. I was first introduced to these, I'd never heard of them, and I'd even worked on um, a cross-stitch magazine, and one of the embroidery designers that we used to have on air introduced me to them. Wonderful, absolutely love them. Please do check out for those. We've got more of you who have those in baskets than we actually have currently in stock. So please do. I'm gonna pack it away. And it comes in a nice box, so should you want to buy it as a present, it's nice and easy to wrap, and these things are very important. Nice, yeah, 1999, lovely gift. For yourself, even. But do check out and do use your code, because um, I know some of you have forgotten. Don't want you paying P&P today, really don't. If you've already checked out, phone the call centre, or if you buy again in the day that's fine you can put the code on later it will still come off all your basket it won't just come off the things later love free pmp i know it makes a difference doesn't it i quite often when i shop online i think oh when i see it's free pmp i get quite quite excited then but it's to remember it's across our sewing machines as well and when you think what it costs to post a sewing machine hi rebecca oh there's a message here an email, an email. Hi, Rebecca, I love my seat frame. It's a game changer. When I'm not using it, I use it as an ornament. Lots of love, Julie. That's brilliant. Well, it looks really nice, doesn't it? Because it actually looks like a bit of set dressing, doesn't it? Sort of quite like, oh, look at my embroidery in the, cor in the corner. Oh, thanks for that message, Julie. That's lovely. I th I'm totally with you. I think that's a brilliant ornament. Because actually, it's a really nice way of framing your embroidery just in a hoop. That's beautiful. Right, we're going to do a panel. Let's move on to fabric. This one. Oh, this is nice. Oh, I haven't seen this one. Who is this by? This is huge. It's like stained glass. Well, it's like, no, mosaic. It's mosaic, isn't it? Not stained glass. <gasps> oh, I've never seen this one. Oh, that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. 
this has only been on air once before but look at it. it i mean when you get close up it is like um do you want me to hold it up problem with that is i'm not really that tall i'll give it a go and my arms aren't very long oh that's not bad can you see because i can't <laughs> But look at the, well, I can see through the back. Look at the mosaics on it. I don't know whether these are, can I put your arms down now? Okay. Um, when you look at the pieces on it, I don't know whether these are photographs or whether they're illustrations, but they actually look like real mosaics because some of the pieces in it, oh, there we've got a proper picture now. Some of the pieces in it are slightly iridescent. So you could use this and just quilt it and have it as just a beautiful wall hanging as it is, because it is gorgeous. Or alternatively, you could use each individual one. You could um, create a set of cushions. You know, if you cut round each of the birds and then put a board around them, you'd have loads of cushions. Depends how you want to do it. So what's the full price on that? It's 12, 12 99 It's only been on there once before. That's a very good price, a full price. $12.99. I mean, even if that, oh, that's a beautiful wall hanging. But today, it's going to be, let's wait and see, surprise, $10.99. That's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, I've been loving doing our bird of the month. I'm just working on the final, final part, which is going to be just after Christmas. Uh, and it's been great working through all. But these are absolutely gorgeous. I've never seen them in mosaics like these. So I think it would make a stunning hanging just on its own because, but again, you could use the individual panels. You could make things for different people then. It really, I don't know, I can't work out whether it's a photograph or whether it's an illustration, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Whoever did all the mosaics, very clever. I know I'm amazed that's been reduced if we've only had it on air once. Oh well. Buy it before they change their minds because it will go up, it will go back if we have any stock left, because it is really popular, but if we have any stock left. I don't know why it's only been on air once before, because it is, I don't know, I think that was a mistake. I don't know, but uh, yeah, Elliot's saying, what birds do you think they are? I'm not the best person, I'll, I think that's a cardinal bird, I know that, because I crocheted one once, and that's it. I have no idea. I know what blue tits are and robins. I mean, I should do. Having worked on Bird of the Month for a whole year, I should know what they all are. But but I think there are more, more birds than 12. So I don't know. Anyone who knows, please let me know. That's a nice one, isn't it? He's singing. <laughs> I'm laughing because then it goes, he's singing. <laughs> He is singing. I think they're all singing. <laughs> the whole quilt kit. <gasps> I can't believe we've got a quilt kit on Black Tag. That is well worth it, isn't it? Ooh. So, let me get the, quilt, the kit and I'm going to show you. This fabric is amazing. We had this fabric on air. I remember seeing it. It's gorgeous. So... You know that Tula Pink, amazingly talented Tula Pink who does beautiful fabric. Her tattoo artist is Rachel Hoyer. Hoyer. And she has designed all the fabric in this. Now, I remember having the fabric on it. It is absolutely gorgeous. Have you got a picture of it or can I open it? We've got a picture. So, her, so Tula Pink's tattoo artist has designed this. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful. It's very, very detailed. Look at the quilt. So it features its um, fabrics from the cat tails range. So you've got cat, like um, line art illustration. So it's not your. It's almost not like your traditional tattoo. It's just beautiful, fine illustrations. You've got the cats and fishing. You've got balls of wool. All different designs. They're gorgeous, but very fine and detailed. And then it's been created into this beautiful quilt. In the kit, a seven. Um, in to over seven meters of fabric and full instructions so you won't have the backing and the and the wadding but other than that you have everything to make that quilt it's beautiful isn't it 
So the full price for that is 109 99 and you can split pay that so if you want to spread the payments you can do two equal payments across that if you want to remember split pay is zero interest we don't charge you anything that is going down today to 99.99 now the full size does it say i want to, does it say right 160 by 183 centimeters that's a really really good size you can that would fit a double bed we did have the sample here, but they made us send it back. But we've only got one kit left in stock now. So if you want that one, it will be this one. It will be this one. So, but don't worry, I haven't opened it. I, look, the sellotape is still intact. It's still lovely. 99.99, which is a fantastic price. And it is a beautiful quilt, isn't it? Are we going to drop it again? Oh, can I have it then? Mm. 87.99. I love that. That is, it is beautiful. And look at it. It's beautiful shades of sort of neutrals and pinks and greens. It's very subtle. Absolutely gorgeous quilt. 87.99. So if you want to buy it on split pay, that's two equal payments of 43.99. And um, the payment will be taken, first payment will be taken out now, but you will be sent this one box for the lucky person who manages to get it. You will have it straight away. So do quickly check out and put it in your basket because we only have one. The others have gone. Oh, it's gone. Well done. Whoever got it. Can you send me a picture when you finished it? There you are. Yeah, I promise it's in perfect condition. This is yours. Panels. Oh, sorry, hours. Hours, hours, hours. Right. Would you mind which one we start with? Let's open this one then. Be surprised. You never know until you open it what it is. Animal toys. Oh, that's lovely. So we've got two large cushions. I haven't seen this one. And two small toys. So we've got the lion cushion. So there's the front of the lion. There's the back of the lion. Look at his curly tail. Then we've got the whale. So these really simple. Cut them out around the black line. Pin them right sides together. Sew them together. Leave them a gap. Turn them right sides out. Or don't forget to clip the corners or use some pinking shears. And stuff them and then slip stitch the gap closed. So you've got the lion, the whale. Then you've got the pants, panda and the crocodile. You've got little labels. These are just lovely for babies or young children, aren't they? Because there's no small parts. Just absolutely gorgeous. Look really nice in a nursery if you wanted to use them as decoration. You know, if you pop them on a shelf or put them on the on the bed or the cot, aren't they just gorgeous? Really nice, so although there's a lot of detail in here, the lines that you're sewing around are nice and smooth, so quite easy to do, but they're so sweet. So if you've got a animal or jungle themed nursery or baby's toddler's room, it's absolutely perfect. $14.99, full price. But we're going to drop it to seven pounds and 49 pence. So that's 50% off. Half price for this beautiful panel. So you've got two cushions and then two toys. These would look beautiful in a child's room, wouldn't they? Completely exclusive. You cannot get this anywhere else. Seven pounds 49, totally 100% exclusive to Sewing Street. And that price will go back up. Only seven pounds 49. They're lovely. Look at the expression on the lion's face. Look, he's sleeping. He looks very content. He's not a scary lion at all, is he? And you get labels on the panel as well. So you could put the, um, you could embroider or write with a permanent marker pen the name of the person that you were giving them to as well. Aren't they lovely? Seven pounds and 49 pence. You just need um, some soft toy filling. That's all. And... But it is beautiful. It's really nice. I mean, it's a really good weight of cotton for cushions because it's um, it's got a good sort of. It's not. It's slightly thicker, so it's really good for toys because all the stuffing won't come through. Right. Let's open the next one. It's the surprise panels. Um, this one has got lemons on. Oh, not not that one then. Oh, we can do it. It'll Ooh, remember summer? Oh, I like this. This is very nice. Wow. Oh, 
placemats. So they are made to be um, placemats. So you've got two circular ones and two rectangular ones. These are gorgeous. I'm thinking outdoors. What a lovely thing to make for um, summer, summer out dining outdoors. Put these on the centre of your table. These are gorgeous, aren't they? There's even got the instructions on here about how to make them. You can um, use wadding in them and quilt them. Or you could use them for other things. You don't have to make placemats with them. But so you've got the round one with lemons and you've got another round, the blue one. These are beautiful. Make me think of Provence. Provence, very friend. They're beautiful, aren't they? But they would look lovely, wouldn't they? Um, just on the table in your house or on your sort of a side table. They're gorgeous conservatory. And I know it's not summery and lemony, but it will be again one day. Get ready, get ready for your summer stitching. Well, also, you know, this, the full price is fourteen ninety nine, which, as I keep saying, you know, will go back at midnight. Nine ninety nine. What a fantastic price for a panel. Well worth getting hold of. Now, keep it. You know, when you've got a bit of time over Christmas and you want to do some sewing, you can make it then. Absolutely beautiful. I mean. I don't think you'd be able to get two table settings and the centre, you know, these four for $9.99. I think that's a fantastic value. And this is beautiful fabric as well. It's really soft and not nice drape to it. Absolutely gorgeous. All the instructions are on there, tells you what you need, cut along all the pattern pieces. It's even got, look here, like little diagrams of how to do it. So it's all there. Um, it says things like, if you desire, you can sew around your place spots to create a more quilted look and you can personalise by adding some embellishment. So it gives you other ideas as well. But everything you need is on here, including the instructions. Absolutely lovely. $9.99. Bargain. Oh, right. So uh, Re Reva, who's messaged in, Kat has forwarded your message to the help team who should be able to sort it out for you. We've, they are currently taking about 48 hours to apply to emails, just so you know, but Kat has forwarded it to you, but she has forwarded it to you. But if you have any problems, give the call centre a ring. Um, yes, Elf and Santa Hexes. We still got, do have time to sew for Christmas. Well, I thank goodness we've still got time to shop for Christmas as well. Look at these. They're gorgeous, aren't they? 60 coordinating hexes. So they are two inch hexes, which basically means the way that hexes are described as is this is the length of here. So the quarter of an inch seam allowance is added. So once these are sewn, they will become two inch hexes. So these lengths, are the, they've got the quarter of an inch all round, but that's how it works. So you've got... Um, they once finished, they're two and a quarter inch. So you can cut them all out. If you've got some paper pieces, you could then EPP them, make them into a cushion. With the hexes this size, you can even machine sew them together. But you've got some with Father Christmases, some with elves, you've got hats, then you've got uh, some plain ones, look, you've got some striped ones. Aren't they lovely? Really, really coordinating make a lovely stocking so if you join them if you worked out what your stocking shape was and then join the pieces together so that it just goes outside that stocking shape if you then pin the stocking shape to it and cut round it that's gorgeous then you can just use a piece of plain fabric for the back absolutely beautiful isn't it and this is exclusive to sewing street so you won't be able to find this anywhere else but if you've um if you've ever had to go at machine piecing hexes we haven't had to go lots of tutorials around Find out how to, it's really, it's actually much easier than you think, but a lovely thing to EPP. So the full price of this panel, 60 of these hexes, is normally £14.99. <coughs> but we're going to half it. And it is going to be £7. And it is £7.49 for 60 two-inch hexes. Think of all the wonderful things you can make with that. Remember, if you want to make it go further as well, you could use some of your own plain fabric. So if you've got some um, green or red, you could use that amongst it. Or actually, because a lot of this is um, greys and beiges and silvers, you could just use some neutrals like a calico. If you cut the use these as a template to cut the um, hexes out to the same size, use your own and make it go even further. So you could have one in the centre and then have the hexes in your own plain fabrics all the way around. You can make a whole quilt then. 
Use this as the sort of the starting, the basis for your own designs. You don't have to use it. Although this, this is why, you know, it isn't a project that comes with instructions. You can use it for your own inspiration and thoughts. But I think that would make a lovely Christmas quilt. Next one. Which... Oh, this one. Oh, sorry. On the edge of my desk. Good job I haven't got a shop, isn't it? I'll never be able to find anything. Can you imagine? <gasps> Ooh, that's nice. Snowflake. Oh, that's gorgeous, isn't it? What I love about this is that you can... There's so much um, room to do as much or as little as you want. So this would make a beautiful hanging, all used as the centre of a quilt. You could quilt around the squares or you could quilt around the snowdrops or you could do both. What I would do is I would quilt around the edge of the snowdrops and then use some green thread and sew some lines on top so it's really heavily embroid machine embroidered. It would make it them really um, stand out, you could, or hand embroidered, and then you can then sew around the background. I mean, that's beautiful. I absolutely love that. But you don't just get one. Oh, no. Oh, no. You get more than one. This next one is crocus. Because it will be spring one day. That's the guarantee that the seasons do happen. Love that one. What a beautiful set of hangings. And then finally, you get the daffodils. So these used to be $12.99 each, which is an amazing price. But we've bundled them together for £19.47. And we're going to, should we drop the price? Oh, we've got to, it's not nine o'clock yet. Under £10. Really? Three panels? For £9.73, what, and they used to be £12.99 each. <gasps> These are beautiful, but the price will go back up. This isn't just, this isn't like clearance when it's, you know, we're just going to have this price until it's gone. The price will go back up. £9.73 for all three panels and free P&P. They are gorgeous. Right, so you can buy them on the website individually. Right, but in the black tag offer, we reduce them to six fifty each. But they were twelve ninety nine, so you can buy them for six fifty each. But our special offer is I can't remember what it was now nine pound seventy three. Nine pound seventy three for all three, so you can buy one for six fifty, all three for nine seventy three. Oh, aren't they beautiful? I oh, absolutely lovely. We only have 17 of these bundles left though, so please, please do check out. Don't forget, it's free P&P. &P. If you've already checked out, then you can, um, you can phone the call centre to put your P&P &P in, or just you can buy something else and then put it in there. then. This, the here. Right, so thank you for, for joining me for this first hour. In the next hour, I've got Stuart waiting in the wings for the beautiful Let It So bag. Look, there's the front. There were so many that have already gone. And look, and there's the back. And look at the, look at the, let me just show you the handles. Look, lined with beautiful poinsettia. So I'm going to be talking to Stuart about how he comes up with the designs, because that's, you know, I mean, obviously he's going to show us how to make the bag. But really interesting is, you know, how does he come up with the designs? Where where does it go from his head and how does it get onto the fabric and all the bits in between? How does he decide what's going to happen and with all the different things? So please don't go anywhere. You've probably got time to make a cup of tea, hopefully. Um, Stuart will be on air with me in a few minutes time to talk about this beautiful new bag. Please get ahead, pop it in your basket and then you'll be all ready for the demo. I'll see you in a little bit. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com 
or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 44 33. Hello, my name is Mark Francis and I'm a guest designer right here on Sewing Street. Uh, you may have seen me before. I don't know whether anybody has maybe tuned into the Great British Sewing Bee, but I was there for Series 6 reaching the quarterfinals. I'm now here on Sewing Street on your screens, bringing you my very favourite sewing patterns for men, women and children. Uh, for dressmaking and tailoring. Uh, so you can fill your stash and your collection with my very favorite fabrics and sewing patterns, including my very own range uh, right here, exclusive to Sewing Street. Something you may not know about me, now let's have a think. A lot of this has been covered on the sewing bee, but uh, I am a Blue Peter badge winner. I know, I know. I haven't worn it in a while. Slightly too old to get into Warwick Castle these days wearing it. But you never, I, do I pass for 16? I don't know, possibly not anymore. Um, and I'm also, hence the piano, uh, a pianist I've been playing since the age of seven when my school teacher at the time taught me a little under duress from my mother because he thought I would be terrible. Turned out I wasn't, but there we go. Such is life, you never know until you give it a go. <gasps> Have I just invented a new catchphrase? I don't know. You never know until you give it a go. Caption across the screen, please. Thank you very much. So do join me popping up on your screens on here on Sewing Street to bring you my very favourite sewing patterns uh, and fabrics from across the range, including my very own uh, range of sewing patterns from So Mark Francis, um, including this very Turlo shirt. Um, more to come on a regular basis, so do keep tuned for that. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly warm hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. To date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers, by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the home page, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the home page, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. If you're a 
Irish Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Hello, my name is Mark Francis and I'm a guest designer right here on Sewing Street. Uh, you may have seen me before. I don't know whether anybody has maybe tuned into the Great British Sewing Bee, but I was there for Series 6 reaching the quarterfinals. I'm now here on Sewing Street on your screens bringing you my very favourite sewing patterns for men, women and children. Uh, for dressmaking and tailoring. Uh, so you can fill your stash and your collection with my very favourite fabrics and sewing patterns, including my very own range uh, right here, exclusive to Sewing Street. Something you may not know about me, now let's have a think. A lot of this has been covered on the sewing bee, but uh, I am a Blue Peter badge winner. I know, I know. I haven't worn it in a while. Slightly too old to get into Warwick Castle these days wearing it. But you never, I, do I pass for 16? I don't know, possibly not anymore. Um, and I'm also, hence the piano, uh, a pianist I've been playing since the age of seven, when my school teacher at the time taught me a little under duress from my mother because he thought I would be terrible. Turned out I wasn't, but there we go. Such is life, you never know until you give it a go. <gasps> Have I just invented a new catchphrase? I don't know. You never know until you give it a go. Caption across the screen, please. Thank you very much. So do join me popping up on your screens on here on Sewing Street to bring you my very favourite sewing patterns uh, and fabrics from across the range, including my very own uh, range of sewing patterns from So Mark Francis, um, including this very Turlo shirt. Um, more to come on a regular basis, so do keep tuned for that. Uh, welcome back to Sewing Street. It is the fantastic Stuart Hillard Bagar Hour. The Let It Sew. Um, sorry we've had a slightly longer break. We're having a lot of technical issues. I think it's that cold. That snow has just done us in. So um, the cameras are just up, very upset today. One of them suddenly went blurry, so we were trying to fix it. We've all we've always sorted it. We're going to be fine. We just got still a few problems i think it's the snow do you know we're rubbish in this country we can't cope with any extremes of weather in particular our cameras now this hour is all about this beautiful bag so i'm going to show you the panel first and then we'll talk about the bag but let me show you the panel everything you need is on this panel including the instructions 19.99 amazing amazing value now it's so big that i actually can't get it across the whole table. You could use it as a tablecloth. <laughs> and a very interesting tablecloth, but I will pull it down. So look, let's have a look at the pictures. So the, this is the front. Or is that the back? I suppose you can have either as the front or the back. Yeah, you can really what would pick. You, what would you say? Um, I would say the sewing machine was the front. Right, so there's the front, mm. and then that's the front with the pocket. Then, but you can choose because it's totally uh, whichever way. Then this is the back, look at it. I mean, I'm gonna, let, I'll talk through with Stuart in a minute. And then you've got that with, yeah, is the tape measure to scale, Stuart? Uh, I wouldn't it? use it as an accurate yes. method for measuring. Mm. But then uh, it is no. a slightly windy, so it wouldn't really be that useful. Would no, it, it wouldn't really. be particularly useful. I'm just doing my ironing Are you while doing we your talk. Ironing? Come yeah, shirts, yeah I've got some jeans under here. Yeah. I, don't, I don't iron underwear, no. <laughs> oh, it goes into the drawer so much better, though. Does it? It's all folded. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got the other side, the other front piece that's got the pocket on it, which features the embroidery who would. We'll talk about that in a minute. We have got handles and handle linings as well. We now we have tried to get as many as we can because we sold out last time. Because it is exclusive, you can't get this anywhere else. Let me show you else else on the panel. Look, it's even got little labels. This belongs to. We've got the internal security pocket. Very magic that is. 
and, and useful. It's really nice to have a bag, particularly when it's open. I know a lot of you don't like um, maybe putting a zip in the top of your bag, but you've got an internal security pocket. Um, then we've got bag facing the, uh, there. We've got tabs. And look, there's all the instructions. Even the instructions are beautiful. You can make your own bag from them afterwards. <laughs> and then even key fobs as well. So you've got the bag, you've got the internal pockets, you've got the instructions, you've got the key fobs. It is gorgeous. So everything you need is on there. So um, morning, Stuart. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Rebecca? Morning, good. everyone at home. Um, is everyone staying warm and cosy? Gosh, it's cold it's today. It's really cold. It's minus three. What was it with you? Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, I came down yesterday mm. and I drove down in the snow. It really was like driving in a winter wonderland. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, it was pretty, actually. And, and you know what? Everyone was being really sensible on the road. So if you're on the road yesterday, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you saw Stuart and you were sensible, thank you. But you know, I mean, as I was driving along, I was mm. singing that song let it so let it so let it so and that was really my starting point for this bag it was about you know what the weather outside might be frightful oh. but in my sewing room it is always delightful <laughs> and i've got my sewing machine running and you know that's what i do in the winter i bed down and i sew lovely so that was my starting point okay for the panel. so the the actual let it sew was the beginning part of it yeah let me just grab the bag down so you yeah know, i want to know about yeah, how it starts, what's the design process Sure. Like this? Well, I mean, I love old sewing machines. So so for me, it's always a good start to start with a sewing machine. Um, so we started with a vintage sewing machine. And this is just like the one that my mum used to sew oh, with when it? I was a child. She had a hand cranked uh, black sewing machine with gold paint on it. And I just used to sit there watching her sew. And I thought it was completely magical. Um, and then uh, I wanted to put a gorgeous kind of wreath of Christmassy, wintry oh, flowers You've around got a beautiful it. Beautiful poinsettia. Yeah, on there. lovely poinsettia, which I can never keep alive. But you know, this no, one won't fade. This one won't <laughs> die. Some lovely little pine cones mm. and berries. A little bit of sort of fur. I will save those trimmings when I'm when I'm doing the tree, so I can decorate the house with it. And then lovely snowflakes in the background. So it's all about that kind of magical getting back to your sewing, even though it may snow. And then round the top, it just says, "Let it sew." Let it sew, let it sew, because <laughs> that's what your machine needs to do. Yes. <laughs> now, on the front of the bag, you have got this really, really big. So the pocket goes the full width across. Oh, that's really useful, There's isn't it? There's one big way in. I like that. So it's Thanks. not stopped at all. You can go all right. the way through. Exactly right. And then the um, edge of the pocket, what I've done here is I've understitched this. I'm going to show you today how that's to understitch. Really, yeah, if really you're a dressmaker, you probably use that technique. But for a lot of bag makers and quilters, that's a new technique. So there's no top stitching that's visible from the front, but it's still really flat and neat. So I didn't want to interrupt that lovely design. Now, on the other side of your bag, this can be the front or the back. It's entirely up to you. You've got the embroidery hoop. Mm. So um, I have many embroidery hoops in my house. Um, and, of course, for years and years, they were just a means to embroider. Now, of course, they're a frame, aren't they? Oh, of course, they? yeah. No, lots and lots of people frame things. But it is a really nice way of framing, It's isn't a it? gorgeous it's a way of framing art. and perfect if you're into your sewing like we are. So the wreath is created using an embroidery hoop. And then there are kind of sewing accoutrement. When I filmed the Christmas special of the sewing bee, mm. we all had to create a panel, a, um, a block, a 14 mm. inch block I think it was, for a table runner. Okay. And what I did for mine, we could do whatever we liked. And so for mine, I created a wreath out of appliqued sewing tools and wow. leaves and berries. Wow. So I did scissors oh, okay. and a rotary cutter mm. and pin cushion, that kind of thing. And then some, some um, flowers. And I've repeated the same thing here on this panel. So you've got your scissors and um, a, a marking wheel, some embroidery floss, pin cushion and threads. Um, and a little bit of, I love a pink poinsettia. Know, so pretty. Nice, and then again, you've got another absolutely huge pocket for keeping mm. things on the front of your bag. Nice straps. The straps um, will go over your shoulder very nicely. If I just pop it on so you can see, 
That's so, nice. And even if you've got a big coat on, exactly there's still right. room, isn't there, to there's be able to hang those room, over? If lovely. you want them shorter, of course, you can shorten them. Mm. If you want longer straps, there are actually some tabs on your panel. Oh, OK. So what you can do there is add a tab, add a ring. Oh, yeah, like and a then put your, yeah, yeah, perfect. D-ring, circular ring, even curtain rings I use, wooden and curtain And I love rings. the lining on the pocket. It's cute, isn't it? Because you've got the red and the pink poinsettias on the lining. Yeah, and you could use that as the outer if you prefer, you of course. It you is lovely, choose. though, isn't it? It makes it look quite special. Absolutely. Yeah, I've always said create use a nice fabric for lining. Mm. Um, and then inside the bag itself, you've got a facing oh, around yes. the top, okay, which you're going to add to so if you don't want to line your bag, you don't need to. Um, you can just use the facing and mm. then just stitch that down to neaten. If you use a lining, um, even better. Uh, I've included a security pocket. Now I'm just gonna pop this security pocket out so you can see how it looks. So this security pocket sits between, it's actually um, uh, stitched into the space between the facing right, and the so lining. Right, so it's, it's, so it it's hangs loose. free. It does. It's got a zip across the top, and then inside we've also got lovely fabric. Ah, integral. So there it is. It's all included on the panel. So you don't have to line this pocket, but it has got a zip. I am going to show you how to make this. Good. So don't worry. It's really easy. But yeah, look, there's even a little sprig of something lovely down there. Some so. Berries. As well as the, what, you, what else do we need? Oh, it says on here, doesn't it? A metre of solid fabric for the lining. Yeah, a metre, and, and that will give you plenty to um, line the outer pockets yes. and line the whole bag as well. OK. And a pack of H640 or a metre of medium weight fusible interfacing. Yeah, so, I mean, you don't have to include those things mm. if you don't want to. You can just use the fabric itself. Right. Um, but I like to interface. I like to interface the pocket mm. and then just using a lightweight fusible. And then I like to use H640 for the bag front and back. OK, to give it a bit more body. A bit more body. Nice. I like it yes. to be softly padded because although this is a tote bag, it's a special tote yes, bag, yes, isn't it? Exactly. And you want it to sort of hold its shape. When you pop it down mm. on the ground or pop mm. it on the table in the cafe when you're having your hot chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. With whipped cream and marshmallows. Definitely. And okay, some sprinkles. It's, yeah, because it's winter. It, and you deserve and it. you deserve it. Mm. Um, you want it to hold its shape. Yes. So it shows yeah. off that design. It would also be fantastic. As a, as a gift, wouldn't it? You could really gift this yeah, to somebody. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think, yes, adding the sort of the interfacing and the wadding just, it gives it that structure, doesn't it? It makes it a bit, bit of a yeah, special bag. Yeah, it feels much nicer quality yeah. as a finished bag. Definitely. Now, of course, as with my previous bag panel, if you wanted to, you could actually get two bags out of this okay, by adding yes, in some yes. of your own fabric. So what you could do there is you could use the bag front and back because they feature the full design. It's not just a little bit in one corner, mm. it's the full thing. So you could use that as a front and back of a bag, no pockets, okay? Then you could use maybe a plain fabric or a striped fabric yes, for the bag yeah. front and back and then add your pocket to the front. You'll be missing that little bit mm. there, but that's okay. Or you could have one as the front and one as, you know, yeah, and have you a plain back. Yeah, you could match like you? that. Absolutely. Get as much value out yeah, of this definitely. panel as you possibly well, can. Because we've got key fobs on there as well. Yeah, you've got a couple of little like key fobs, fobs. Or you could make it into a bag charm, something like that. Yes. You've also got a little bit of extra fabric as well oh, on your panel. That, that little one there. Bit of poinsettia. So if you wanted to add a slip pocket to the inside oh, of your yeah, bag, you could yes. do that too. Um, and you've got some little labels as well. Also, you could use the bag front and back. You could make cushions out of those if you preferred. Yes, you could actually, couldn't you? They would yeah. make beautiful cushions. Yeah, they would. Even though we've we've cut out the bottom corner. Oh, but that's fine. Just for boxing. That's but that would make a beautiful cushion, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, in yeah, In your yeah. sewing room. Absolutely. Or a little wall hanging or something mm. like that. Um, you could even make it as a wall hanging with two big pockets on, okay, couldn't yes. you? Yes, definitely. Put your stuff in your, you know, yeah. your sewing patterns, things like that. So many options. All sorts of so options. So many options. I do love an option. Yes. So the panel is £19.99. We have sold hundreds already. We've got a message from Sharon. Oh, Ooh, lovely. Jumped into my basket. I'm currently working on the overnight bag from Stuart's book. 
Oh, fantastic. Fab book and instructions too. Oh, oh thank you. Sharon, we morning have, to you. We always have lovely messages about your bag though. That's really uh, nice. Another thing. one from um, Kerry. Morning, lovely people. I love this mag bag. Never go... I have never made one, so I'm going to give this a go. It's too nice not to. Lovely bag, Stuart. Oh, it thank is actually. You. That's Kerry. It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? It's well, too nice not to. When we, when I've gone to the trouble of designing it, you yes. know. <laughs> yes, when Stuart's gone to all this trouble of designing it, and we've yeah. gone to all the trouble of printing it. I do appreciate you making it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and another one from Nikki. Morning to you both. Morning, bag Nikki. bought. Watching you on the quiet while it's working. Good idea. Oh, good for yes. you. Yes. Yeah, have it on it's, in the background. Anyway, it is working, isn't it? Right. So, if you, before we go on to Stuart's demonstration, the panel is nineteen ninety nine. Everything you need on there. If you do want the H six forty, you need the half meter pre cut piece five ninety nine. That's on screen at the moment. We also have some solid fabric that's on the website that you, because you need a metre for the lining. Yep. Um, we've got crimson. It is absolutely beautiful, What colours did you use to line yours? I've used, well, I'm going to use the crimson today. Right. And then for my original, I've used the blue. The blue. Now, I've used, yeah, this lovely, look at that, gorgeous uh, okay. blue. Yeah, so we, if you have a look on the website, we've got lots of different blues, so it's up to you. But There's loads of different colours in the panel, though. But just yeah, look at all the colours. You could have green. You green. could go. You could go light pink. Light pink would look really lovely. I'd always go for something that wasn't too dark, because otherwise you just create this sort of black hole right. that all of your stuff will get lost in. Yes. Okay. There's the crimson. Yeah, no, I see what you mean. I mean, or if you've got fabric in your own stash, you know, if you've got a yeah. bit of print fabric, you put what you like in it. But yeah. um, if you want to have the crimson, that's the one there, £3.49 for half a metre. But you will need a metre of that. Right, so what are you doing first then? Stuart, well, at the moment, I'm ironing? just ironing again. <laughs> it <laughs> ironing. seems to be doing a lot of that. <laughs> um, yes. Um, what I'm doing, I'm just ironing the outer pocket right. to a, um, some fusible interfacing. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, um, but I just like the extra firmness that it gives to the fabric. Okay. And just when you're using interfacing, I always like to iron from the fabric side rather than ironing on the back of the interfacing because I find it sort of shrivels up. Yeah. Um, I'm probably have, I probably got my iron a little bit too hot there, but I tend to have it on cotton setting. And mm. then I'll just go from the front and fuse everything together. Um, but as I say, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then once you've got your pocket um, interface, and you can see there, I've just rough cut that at mm. the moment. What I'm going to do then is layer that on top of my lining fabric. And I'm going to use the printed pocket as my pattern. Okay. Because okay? I need to cut out two pockets. Now, I need two pockets for my finished bag, but I'm just going to make one of them. So I'll just cut out one today. All right. So, but when you're doing this at home, do it on the fold. Oh, so cut out two at the same yeah, time? Yeah, cut out two oh, at the same good. time. Um, so I'm just going to lay that on top like that. And you can see I've got my interfacing as well. And I haven't specially cut out anything at this stage. I'm all about doing a job once, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, mm. rather than cutting out each individual element. I remember when I started dressmaking and it sort of instructed you to cut out the interfacing using the paper pattern and then interface, you know, put always that. Say, it always says that. Always it? says that. I never do that. I always layer everything up. Yes, why would you do that? Yeah. I, I'm a busy person. But I know, but I th don't you think it takes time of doing these things sometimes thinking, actually, why am I doing that? Yeah, yeah. I do. I mean, it is definitely my my secret sort of, you know, to, to getting things done, just to find the quickest the, yeah. way. And actually, it's really hard to cut out interfacing with a paper pattern, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because you, you're flimsy. Yeah. I mean, you still want to be successful. You know, I'm mm. still going to the trouble of pinning this all in place, you know, before I start cutting because um, you want to do a decent job. And then I'll just kind of, I'm just going to roughly cut round this because I will actually rotary cut this out. It'll be quicker to do. Um, I'd normally have this all done at home, but uh, I think because of the snow, 
I'm just going to blame the snow for everything. Yeah, the snow just because just of the snow. Just it's because of the snow. Yes. And then I'm not going to finish my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say because of the snow. But, uh, then but I'm actually, it's really cut. nice to see the process because this is something that we're all going to have to do at home. So it's quite nice because For even sure. though you you know you might have cut these out many times before, it's always really good to see how someone else does the basic things. Yeah. Because you always pick up tips. Absolutely. So I rotary cut around mostly, and so what I'm doing now is I'm actually using the, you know, the print itself. So you don't want to leave any white fabric at all around the outside edge. So I'm just turning everything around. And of course, as I'm doing this, I'm also cutting out my interfacing and my lining fabric as well. I'm going to leave the curve because I'll do that with scissors. Um, I'm not, I don't approve of freehand cutting, I'm afraid. Well, I can't, so I don't think I approve or don't approve, I just can't do it. No. I go all over the place. How so, do people do it then? I know. Well, just safety first and all that. I do like having ten fingers. <laughs> well, I've but got sort of nine and a half. Some people go it, you know, and I just, I end up, I, I tried it once and went through the middle of something. Yeah. I know, you only do something like that once, don't yeah. you? Okay, so now just curve to finish, and then we'll start putting this pocket together, and I'll show you how to sew the curve, and also how to understitch, which is such yeah. a neat technique. Now, I didn't know what understitching was when I did the sewing bee. And the very first challenge that we had to do was making an A-line skirt. I mean, it was the first skirt I'd ever made, let alone A-line. Um, and uh, it said to understitch around the top of the <laughs> waistband. Well, what did you do when you thought, oh, don't worry. Well, I thought, I don't even know what understitching <laughs> is. And there, there's no explanation, of course. And so um, I just pressed it all flat and then top-stitched around it Ooh. you see <laughs> which which kind of did a job a job but not the job mm. and um you know and then i got of course i got criticized for it um and it absolutely mortified me because may martin said that my top stitching wasn't very good now i couldn't dress make very well at the time but i can quilt and yeah. so quilting top stitching it's kind of the same thing so the fact that she said that i wasn't very good crushed me <laughs> <laughs> but you know you live and learn mm. <laughs> okay so i've got my lining piece there now so i'm going to whip that out oh we've got a message could you please give us the code for the blue lining love the pattern from pat cyan or cadet Okay, we put them into the, they'll go onto the graphic on the side, so I hope that helps. So I use the cadet. The cadet. For so mine. Stuart used that on his, if you want the blue one. But this red just screams winter to me. I mean, look, and matching. Oh, it is, yeah. And blending. It's a lovely shade, isn't it? It's really nice. Yeah, it's a proper winter red. It is. Now, what I've done here a question, is... A question oh, yeah. from mm -hmm. Anne. Um, Hi guys, Stuart, could you cut out a bigger, a bigger square out to make a bigger boxed bottom? Well, mess up your image. Yeah, because then you'd be going into white fabric. I mean, I suppose what you could do is you could just do like an extra quarter of an inch. Yes, yeah, so if you cut the square out just a bit bigger. Yeah. Yeah, well, you could, oh, you could cut yes. the square out bigger That's and what, lose yes. a little bit of yes. the image. Yeah, you could absolutely so do that. So if you that. wanted a bigger box, but if you wanted it deeper on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, I'll just grab the bag down a second and show you what the sort of profile of the base is, because it's not, it's not narrow. I mean, there's, there's yeah. the base of the bag. It's, it's, not, it's, it's quite reasonable. Couple, yeah, it's good. Yeah, there's a couple of inches it's there. It's wine bottle width. Yeah, that, yeah, that's definitely wine I bottle. I think that says it all. I, th I don't think it needs to be It's wide enough, enough for a wine bottle. bottle. Darling. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I've put right sides together and I'm just pinning the curved edge. OK, this is the only bit we need to worry about at this at this late stage. OK, so I'm just pinning around the curve. And what I'm going to do now is sew that curve using a quarter of an inch. Right. All right. Or thereabouts. Or thereabouts. Or thereabouts. <laughs> Um, Stuart is using the 580 plus Elmer sew machine today. Oh. I hope this hasn't come unthreaded. Oh no, it's fine. We're all right. It's the I snow. haven't got it's my glass. It's the snow today. It is. I haven't got my glasses with me and I can't thread without my glasses. <laughs> okay, so I'm just sewing a nice uh, seam 
that quarter of an inch around that curve. Okay. Taking out my pins as I get to them. Very sensible. I'm so well behaved these days. You are so days. well behaved. You haven't even put them in your mouth or anything. No. Oh, no, I don't do that. My dentist would kill me. <laughs> I always do. My dentist told me hmm. a story. He had treated a, a lady who was a seamstress, you know, a professional seamstress, and he said that she had little grooves in her teeth <gasps> where she'd been putting pins for just her whole life. Huh. I know. Well, I'm going to have to have a look now. I know. I've always got loads of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so I've sewn that curve. Mm. <laughs> now, I shouldn't need to clip into it, really. But it's if little. Yeah, if you do, you can clip into it if you want to. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push that back, okay, out of the way, and then I'm just running my nail along that curve, okay? So I'm fingernail creasing it, okay? Do a good job. Keep pulling that fabric back, get it nice and smooth. And can you see that the seam allowance is facing that away? Yes. So I'm creasing everything towards that seam allowance. Okay, I'm not having to iron it. Yeah, so why are you not ironing it? Well, because with a curve like, well, I can finger press it perfectly yes. adequately. Right, okay. And I will press it in a bit. But if I go in there with an iron now, I'm just going to end up putting creases right. into the fabric. All I need to do at this stage is just to crease it away from not the actual yet. curve. Oh, no, that's really good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam on the mm. red fabric. So I'm attaching the lining of the fabric to the seam allowance that sits under right, it, just okay. about an eighth so of an inch away. So that's why you don't press it. So and don't. That's I know, because that's what everyone will be thinking of. Yeah. And that is understitching. Right. That's Only you'd known. There you go. When you made your A-line skirt. Mm, quite. Which was miserable. Oh. oh, I'd pick the ugliest fabric I could find <laughs> deliberately. <coughs> deliberately. Because, well, what I was doing was I was I was picking quiet, out of the way. Don't look at me. Let me just, you know, mm. dissolve into the background and then I'll leave at the end. Thank you very much. At that stage, um, and you know it was a mistake. <laughs> but they didn't send me home. Well, there so, we are then. You know. So what this does by mm. doing this is it controls the seam allowance and it will hold the lining to the back without being visible from the front. Right. And the reason why, normally I'd have just pressed that back and then top stitched. Mm. But what I don't want is a line of sewing. Yeah, because it's a, so almost a secret pocket. Exactly. It would ruin it, wouldn't it? And that image is so important on the front. I don't want a line of stitching there kind of mm. breaking it up. Yeah. So let me just grab June Taylor back. Grab <laughs> June Taylor. I know Stuart earlier said, I just need a big June Taylor. <laughs> I said, I just don't think I can provide that for you. <laughs> And as soon as you understitch that, what it does is it just it just pulls yeah, the lining to the back, it? and it's so flat, it's like mm. it's been top stitched. It's it's something which I've totally nicked from dressmakers. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but then I'm sure dressmakers nick lots of bag yeah. making skills, don't they? But it's not a technique that we normally use no, in sort not, of patchwork and quilting. Here, it is it? really good. Right now, I'm going to go right. with the iron. Are you happy? No, I was just no, I was. <laughs> I would I wouldn't have used an iron, but I just thought I know people were thinking, why is he not using it? Yeah. And then you just want to give it a press. I've made sure that I've lined up my corners again, um, just so that everything's tip top and lovely. Okay. And then I will flip this to the front and then I'm just gonna give this one final press all around that curve. And just make sure that you've no sort of pleats or wrinkles or anything like that. Oh, that's a beautiful finish. So neat. Isn't that so a good technique? Yeah, it's like really that. useful. I'll really just drop neat. it down onto there so you can see. But you've got a really lovely, absolutely flat as a pancake mm. yes, press. Beautiful. And, and that's it's nice as well without having stitching. to do any of the clipping or the trimming. Yeah, just it's not necessary. Finish. It's lovely. So what you'll do is you'll prepare both your pack pockets. Right. Both your packets. Both your packets, <laughs> packets in the same way. In exactly the same way. Bye. So that's that little scale. Next up, I'm going to show you how to do that that uh, security pocket. Inside. Oh, yeah, that would be useful because there's the zip, isn't there? Yeah. The zip, everyone goes. <gasps> I know. It's nothing to worry about, honestly. It's only a zip. So I'm going to grab, it's only a zip. It's only a zip. I'm going to grab my bits and pieces that I need. So what I've got here is I've got the bottom of the pocket. 
and I've got the top, okay, and the zip's going to get sort of sandwiched in between. Okay, and it's all labelled on the panel. Yeah, So absolutely. easy to see. It says internal security pocket front top, internal security pocket front. Yeah. Easy. But this is like a sort of an added extra. Right. Optional. So all I've said on the instructions for this bit mm. is add, the, add an inner pocket if you want to. Okay. Okay, so this is your demo. This is how to. Yeah, this is how to do it. Yeah. So don't forget, when you get your panel home, don't forget what day it is. You can always watch it back. And then you can watch it back on YouTube. Now, I like little zip ends, and I know you do too. I love a zip tab. I love a zip tab. Love a zip tab. So I, what I've done is I've actually used one of the tabs that I'm not using as tabs. Right. And I've cut that up. So it's sort of, there's the tab, and I've cut it down the middle. Okay. Um, and then folded it in half and pressed it, opened it out, and then I've folded in a quarter of an inch at either end and pressed that too. And what I'm going to do then is kind of sandwich the end of the zip in that. Nice. Line up my folded ends and then I'm just going to run that through the sewing machine and okay. top stitch nice and close to those folds. And that will create a zip end on my end end, if that makes sense. On your end end? On my end end. There we go. <laughs> Cup of tea. Oh, I've got a cup of tea. Cup of tea, lovely Love cup of tea. Love it. I always wondered what understitch means. Thank you for showing it. Seems around necklines on dresses or anything yeah. looks cheap. Julia. Yeah. If right, you, I see what you mean. Yeah. Seems, yeah, seems it does look cheap, doesn't it? But when you understitch, it yeah. looks classy. Oh, it really does. Yes. Yeah, if you top stitch mm. around the top. It just and also if your top stitching isn't brilliant, which clearly mine wasn't. <laughs> Well, and also if you're using a different thread as well, it can, you know, yeah. it's a gamble, isn't it? But understitching is very classy. Classy. So classy. it adds a lovely kind of crisp mm. finish. I know, and people go, oh, how do you do that then? Oh, another so, message. Hello both. Thank oh. you, Stuart. I've heard of it, but never knew how to do it. Thanks for oh, filling in today. It's always good to see you. Lots of love from Julie. Thank you, Julie. Oh. That's really kind. And another one from Collector in Merseyside. I am loving this demo. The finish is super neat on that curve. Stuart makes it look so easy. Thank you. I mean, it, honestly, it is easy. I don't do hard. <laughs> Life's hard enough, isn't it? Let's yeah. be honest. Come on. Um, no, I mean, it's a good technique to learn. Message from Steffi. What's the free, what's the code for the free posters you're packing, please? Loving your bag, Stuart. Oh, Dream team you. today. Oh, thank you, Steffi. It is SS Cyber. C-Y-B-E-R. SS Cyber. Don't forget your free PMP. If you've checked out and you have forgotten, don't worry. Just give the call centre a ring. They're lovely and they'll help you out and sort it out. 0800 001 Okay, so what so I've... we've zip tabbed. Yeah, I've just shortened my zip because I didn't need it quite as long as, as, okay. I, as I had. Um, nylon teeth zips, brilliant. I Love buy them, them in bulk, mm. so I've always got a zip. Um, and the, all I've done is just measured and then about 10 inches and then I stitched across, okay, which means now I can pull the zipper out the way and I can put the zip tab on the other end. Right. When you do this, just make sure once you've got your zip ends on that your zip is going to sit nicely. You're going to get a bit of the zip ends either side. Don't matter if you've got a tiny bit over. Okay. You know, but this is also adding zip ends is a great way. Like if you needed a 10 inch zip for a bag and you've only got a nine inch zip. Yes. Yeah. Add some zip ends. You know, you can't unzip right to the very end, but it's okay. You know, if it means that you can get the job done. And I always buy, I always have a stash like you do, but with, of extra long ones. So, and, and sometimes you think, oh, I've just only cut off like a 10 centimetre piece. But it's nice to just always have zips. It really is. It really is. And don't be afraid of zips, you know. I, I avoided them for years and years. There's absolutely no need. And once you start putting zips into things, you think, oh, that, like an envelope back for yes. a cushion yes. or a zipped yeah. back. You know, it's about half the fabric to do it with the it zip. Is, it is, because you, you haven't got all of the overlap. And, it's, and you also, just you never get that go. bulgy, mm. you know, Christmas day after your lunch no. on your cushion. <laughs> you get a you? nice flat stomach look <laughs> You instead. do, you do. We like and that. Who wouldn't want that? Yes, yeah, we love this flat stomach. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember the days. <laughs> so, what you're going to do now is sew this zip in. All right, so this is where everyone, not everyone, but some, mm. some of us have a little bit of a sort of, oh, I don't like zips, but honestly, they're not difficult. So what I'm going to do is put the zip. So if you think of the zip tab, 
where you put that's the right side. So you're going to put that right side against the right side of your fabric. And this is unlined, of course, so you could line it if you wanted to, but it really wouldn't add anything to the pocket by lining it. So all I'm doing here, I'm not really going to um, pin my zip in place, but I just want to make sure that I've got it sort of fairly evenly spaced and okay. I'll pop a zip in to start with. And I'm just going to undo the zip, Ooh, if I can. There we go. I'm just going to undo the zip a bit so it's easier to sew. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew along here all the way to the end. Use my zipper foot. Right. Okay. So, I mean, really every sewing machine comes with a zipper foot. And they are lovely. Just make sure that you set your sewing machine um, so that the needle's in the right position. Right, yes. Just slide it in. A uh, question from Amber. Morning, Rebecca and Stuart. I jumped in and got your panel for the bag. Thank Please, you. how much fabric do I need in the lining? Thanks, Amber. You will need a metre. Yeah. Now, if you only wanted to put kind of special fabric, if you wanted to save a bit, mm. uh, just get half a metre. Use that to line the actual bag. Right, OK. And then you could use something from your stash to line the curvy pocket. Because you're not going to see that as much. Well, you really the don't. inside of the bag if you wanted to use a special Christmas print or something. Yeah. You know that half metre of fabric that you bought that now you can't bear the sight of? Yeah. Use that. Use that one, yes. <laughs> yeah. What was that? Um, I don't know, Kat was saying, would you be able to put a bit of PU in the bottom? In the... In the bottom. Oh, in to the base. extend it, to make it yes. deeper. You could do. You could do. You could do. I don't see any reason why well, you not. Could, could, you could sew a bit on the bottom and then put the box yeah. bottom on that and add it yeah. on yeah, if you why wanted not? to make it a bit deeper. Yeah. So I've sewn along and I've used a contrast thread so you can see this at home. So I've sewn along that edge, okay, joining the zip to the pocket. And what I'm going to do now is fold that up and then again, hot fingernails. I am that. <laughs> I remember fingernails. once being on with somebody who felt the need to explain that my fingernails weren't actually hot. I think you probably got that at home, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's why have you got hot fingernails? Yeah, I just joke about it, but you know, I use. You know what it is? Partly it's that. Partly it's laziness, having to get up and down, but partly it's that that actually gives me much more control. I've got much more control over my finger and my nail yeah, to get a really iron. sharp crease than an iron, mm, frankly. True. So I've, I've pressed that back so the seam allowance is pointing down. And what I'm going to do now is top stitch nice and close. Nice. Okay. So again, just... Ooh, just to know. hold it in place. Yeah, just to hold it in place. And... Um, it kind of makes it look nice and neat as well and just pretties the whole thing up. I'm just going to extend my seam allow uh, my stitch length rather. Oh, I seem to have picked a triple stitch for some reason. <laughs> I tell you what it is, I'm doing the settings as if this is my Elna at home and this is slightly different. Oh, I see. So I'm picking stitches. And it's Willy using nilly. a different one. You've got a nice triple stitch now. I'm doing a triple stitch That's now. Nice. So I better make sure it's nice and even, I don't know. Well, I often think with your be. machine, you know, you, you don't use all those lovely things. I just always do a top stitch, but I actually could use some of those lovely stitches. Yeah, why I don't not? Know why I don't really. It just takes three times as long. There is that and quite a lot of thread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and probably I'm, veering off as well. And I'm but always in a rush. There we go. All right, we're done. I do love a thread cutter. Oh, okay. It's almost like a mock, mock, um, I don't like that. Anyway, there <laughs> don't we go. Like that. I don't like it now. Mm. But anyway, you get the idea. Yes, You're going to get the idea. Stitch. Decorative top stitch. Yes. Okay, then the um, top of the pocket, you're just going to add it in exactly the same way. All right. right. Okay. So we'll go back to, so again, open that zip up. Um, and stitch that on. Mm. 
message from Michelle. Hi both. I met Stuart in Harrogate. Loving the tote bag. Your oh, Bag for Life book is inspirational. Thank you so much. That's really kind. Thank you. How I, was Harrogate? Um, cold? No, Harrogate was lovely. You had such a nice it wasn't time. Cold then, was it? No, it wasn't really. No, it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and uh, it was lovely to see everyone again, mm. you know. I mean, gosh, I've so missed seeing everybody over the last couple of years and just any opportunity to get back together again. No, I was doing um, a talk. It was a kind of in conversation with, mm. um, with Wendy Gardner, which was lovely. Oh, nice. How is and, Wendy? Oh, very, very well. well. Yeah, oh. very well. Um, so I'm just going to sew the other side of the zip on. No, it was great. And then um, I'd met lots of people as well. And then Mark and Clive and also Matt Gage okay. from the Sewing Bee. We went for dinner together on the Saturday night and had a good old gossip, which was <laughs> lovely. We did, which oh, was lovely. Was nice, and we sort of compared notes. Um, about you know our experience on the sewing bee and oh, things course, like yes. that because of course you know i did first series which was very very different i think in flavor to um latter series yeah really. no well it has changed well they used to do that mm. inspiration bit didn't they Where they, you had to make a cushion and things like that. they did because you know the thing is what a lot of people don't realize is the original concept for the show was that it was going to be home decor well yeah no i remember furnishings, that it was going to be home like decor that. and then they changed it didn't they to dressmaking they did they did right then i'm not going to top stitch along there because you get the idea i'm going to open that zip up and i'm going to put the front and back together now this back pocket or pocket lining I've been generous with the sizing of it so that depending on how closely you stitch to oh, your okay. zip if you're very generous you know it'll still fit right but you can trim it down to size if you want to now what you want to do with this is I know this is a little bit counterintuitive but you're actually going to put right side up of the zip pocket and then when you put this you're going to actually put right side of Ooh. the pocket on top right facing up okay. because when we turn this through we want this fabric to show through the zip of course we don't need nice fabric on the back no, of this pocket oh, that's no really clever now if like you that. wanted to thank you if you wanted to <laughs> yeah, that's good. well it's the sort of thing that you might only realize later when you think oh it'd be nice if yeah but by that point you've sewn it all and constructed so it's Unpick nice it. to know that in advance <laughs> yeah definitely i often make things i go oh wouldn't it have been nice if but i'm not taking it apart now i know what you mean <laughs> um if you wanted to line this pocket, of course, you can. Just use your, your uh, red or your blue lining, something like that. Um, and what we're going to do is sew the sides and the base, but we don't need to sew the top edge, okay? So we'll leave that open and we'll sew down, across and up. Mm. All right, quarter inch seam or thereabouts. It's quite forgiving. I'm just going to go back to my regular foot. <laughs> and your triple stitch. Oh, my goodness, I know. What's <coughs> that all about, eh? Oh, but I think you do get used to your own settings, don't you? And it's just it's you like second nature do. of it, isn't it? Yeah, you really do. So I'm question. Just... Oh, good, yep. Um, love the show. Do you ever come to Glasgow to demonstrate? Uh, now then, I come to Scotland, mm. certainly. Um, Edinburgh is very possibly my favorite city in the world really i absolutely Ooh. love it but i also adore glasgow i think it's a really beautiful vibrant city it's got an amazing buzz and atmosphere mm. um i go to sterling every couple of years to teach a retreat Gee, which nice. is great fun at sterling university it's rather fun actually because i nearly went to sterling university but when I went for the open weekend, mm. I got attacked by a swan. No. And I just... And you thought, that's it? I'm not... Not yeah, coming? Not coming. No, the real reason was <laughs> that I um, realised that, you know, Scottish degrees were four years. Oh, yeah. And British, yeah. you know, English degrees mm. were... And it's a long way from home. It was a very long very, way from home if you want a bit home. of, you know, comfort and, <laughs> you know, your mum and dad. So... <laughs> So there we go. So I've sewn around the sides and base. And now what I'm going to do is turn that pocket through. Mm. 
And what you should see then is, look, there we go. We've got pretty oh, lining. See it clever. I think yeah. it's clever. Um, and, you know, as long as you just press it nice and neatly, you won't ever see that lining on the back. But if that offends you, just put an extra lining fabric. Okay. It's not a, not a problem, is it? Uh, just find something to poke. Well, we had a few We've got a little tools. turning tool here, haven't we? We've always got a turning tool. I've normally got a chopstick, but I actually used my I chopsticks last in a night. Little bag. I have to keep. Somebody made that bag for the turning tools. Mm, yeah. Did you, Kat? Yeah, yeah. Mine I keep in the past plastic packaging with two wonder clips to hold it all together so I don't lose them. I had a little bag. Yes, it's also the demonstration thing for how to turn a turn the tube. Oh, of course. It's all in one. It's been very well thought out, hasn't it? I know, and I, I keep mine because I'm that. worried I'm going to lose the tubes and the things, <laughs> so I keep them in the packaging. <laughs> I'm going to make a little bag. So just as a, a little takeaway for everybody who's watching, mm. this little security pocket can be added to just about any bag, can't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a lover of making tote bags, now I would Perfect. still put a facing on because I don't necessarily want that the extra bulk right around the very top of the bag. Okay, so Do you, you know would have I mean? yes, yeah, so you, you don't want it in that top seam but you'd put it on a facing. No, but, but if you, you see really them in coats sometimes as well, didn't you? Yeah, Those you do. pockets or trousers bizarre. And it just means now that you've got an open tote bag, but you've got something yes. that you can put your yeah. purse or wallet in, anything, you know, sweets. I want to protect my sweets, sweets. frankly. Sweets. Um, and then zip it up. That's brilliant. So that's your little inner security pocket. Now what you're going to do um, is on the facing, okay, here's your facing strip. And what you want to do is fold that in half and find the center. Okay, so I've got a little crease now. I'm going to do exactly the same with my security pocket. Make a little crease, okay. Line those two up and then flip the facing down onto my pocket. I'm going to pin it and then I'm going to baste it in place. Okay. Okay, just to hold that pocket where it needs to be. When I'm making bags, I'm always at pains when I've put pins in to get rid of them as quickly as possible otherwise I'll leave them in the bag oh, okay <laughs> and then I'll have it on my shoulder and think what is digging into me <laughs> now come on everyone at home mm -hmm. you've done it too oh yes and sometimes years later <laughs> as well and you think I cannot believe I've been living with this pin all this time yeah. I'm like a surgeon, you know, I count them in and I count no. them out again. Oh, I've I'm quite honest, honestly, in clothes and all sorts of things, I think I'm amazed there's still a pin in there. <laughs> I'm rubbish at taking the pins out. Uh, morning both, I have ordered your bag for myself from my hubby for Christmas. Oh, isn't that generous oh, of him? Thank you, Louise. That's yes, a lovely bag. Very kind, yeah. Another um, message from Christine. Morning, gorgeous Rebecca and Stuart. Oh, thank Wonderful you. demo, gorgeous, and it shows different techniques can cross over from dressmaking, bag making, and vice versa. Well, yeah. yeah, it's all sewing, isn't it? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. <coughs> so you can see now, I've look, I've attached the pocket to that facing. All right, and what I'm going to do now is attach this to the bottom lining of the the bag. Right. Okay. Yes. So I'll sandwich the two together. Now then, just a word about the bag lining. So let me just show you that bit. So what I'm going to do is grab my lining fabric again. And I'm going to cut out my lining and my pocket, uh, my bag front. Now, you actually want your lining to be two inches shorter than the bag itself. Ah, oh, because of the facing. Yeah. Right. So you could measure that out if you want to. I'm just going to be a bit naughty <laughs> and just trim the top strip off. I do a lot of patchwork. I don't know if you know. You know so I, know I can I always you. use bits of fabric exactly, like that. It yes. won't go to waste by any means. <laughs> Let's just swivel that round. <laughs> I know, but you were just having a little scraps bag and use it for things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's like the triangles that I cut off if I do stitch and flip mm. corners in patchwork. I don't I never waste them. I always I always uh, stitch them up and make little half square triangles. 
the the challenge then is to use the half square triangles that I've made. Oh right, and I try to remember if I can. It's always useful, isn't it? Though. Yeah. Yeah. Message from Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Morning, both. Loving this tote bag. Did a workshop with Stuart making a cushion. Lovely person. Oh, Aww. that's very kind. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. I, I love, love, love teaching workshops. Um, and as busy as I am, I do still try and get out and about to teach workshops because um, my biggest inspiration when I'm designing, writing books, mm. writing for magazines are other sewers. Yeah, well, everybody, it doesn't matter how long you you have or haven't been sewing. You always pick up something from other people. Yeah, and it's not just the tips, you know. But I ideas look, or yeah, thoughts. Yeah, just, you know, what people are wearing, yeah, what true. bags people are yeah. coming to a workshop with on their shoulder, you know, or just chatting to people about something they've made that they found really enjoyable or stimulating mm. or, you know, it all sort of feeds my <coughs> yes, sort of ideas idea. bank. Yeah, exactly. So look, I'm going to be really naughty now and just take two inches off the top. But that won't go to waste. All right, so there's my bottom lining now. So now I'm going to lay... Whoops. Da, 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 da. What do I want? So I want it like that. And like that, don't I? Yeah. So I'm just going to lay this down now. Let's make sure I've got it right. I haven't got that right, have I? <laughs> <laughs> Let's lay that the right way round. Oh, why have I done it like that? Leave it with me for a minute. Just, just having a little think. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick recap. Thank you. It's because it's very hard when you're talking and sewing at the same time. I know. And you sort of lose your train of thought a bit, don't you? Yeah, you do a little bit. And it's a technical thing. So here's the massive panel, 1999 for the whole panel. That includes everything, includes the instructions, includes all the pieces. Um, on top of that, you will need a metre of lining. And if you want to put interfacing, or you want to put what um, H640 or wadding, that's up to you. But you will need that as well. Um, but everything is on here. It's lovely. What a beautiful panel. Absolutely gorgeous. So you've got the front, well, you can choose whether you put the front or the back. The front of the back, beautiful illustrations with Stuart's, one of Stuart's great passions, the sewing machine obviously yes and i love it because i know it's because it doesn't say let it snow it's let it sew. it so does you can use this all year round yeah well yeah Christmas. it was it no absolutely no it was really meant as a winter as yes. a winter bag you know um i wanted it to have that sort of that sort of lovely feel to it yes um so that you could use it any time of year so we've obviously covered parts of it because Stuart wouldn't have been able to make the whole thing in it. But it's really lovely to have done the, the specific parts. <coughs> Sorry, like the understitching and the yes. secret pockets. Great. So remember the date today, 29th. So watch it back. So when you bought your bag and you'd get it back home, have a look at the date and then you can watch it back on YouTube. But all the instructions are here. These are just Stuart's extra little tips. So, they are. Um, thank you for being with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. And it's I hope lovely. as well that when you get your bag <coughs> home, you'll do things like embellish it as well. We didn't well, talk about that. What would you do that. to it? Just a couple well, of embellishment tips. And just, to finish. I would add some little sequins, Ooh, little nice. beads, silver, mm. uh, beads, sequins that kind of thing maybe a bit of metallic thread you could add a little bit of stitching in this line here just to complete this maybe a few little beads in the center oh, of your poinsettia would be it? really nice but just add a little bit of extra bling if you want to <laughs> same on the other side you know you could add um, some little embroidered details or even hand embroider over the top of the lettering well it's got, got that time. hand it's got that sort of hand in or satin stitch yes that's what it looks like it doesn't has. it so you could satin stitch you could too. the other thing you could do as well if you wanted to just add an extra dimension mm. is when you layer up your bag front and back with your h640 yeah. is once it's layered up 
quilt it oh, yes. and then make the bag. So the bag will be quilted, the pocket won't, mm. but your something like cross hatching or whatever would look really, really oh, nice good, in Beautiful. the bag itself. So there's loads and loads of different ways that you could sort of add an extra little dimension to this, um, but kind of make it your, make own. It your own. I shall look yes. forward to seeing Well, that. it's lovely. Please do send us photos, put them on the, um, the Sewing Street Facebook fan page because we love to see him and Stuart's always we on there so do. he will really enjoy it. It's just nice to see that often things that other people have thought as well. You think, oh, exactly, idea, exactly oh, right. Like yes. Beautiful. And when I see you out and about, yeah. I want to see you wearing your bag Indeed, again, with look, pride. It is absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Stuart. It's, it is gorgeous. So you will be back with us at 11 o'clock? I am. I am. I've got uh, Debbie Shaw's panel for making some oven mitts and a hot pad and also a tea cosy. Lovely, don't you? Featuring a lovely cow creamer. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. We will see you back. So thank you for joining me for this out. It's great. If you put the um, panels in your basket, please, please don't forget to check out. Remember, it's free P&P all day. SS Cyber is the code. After the break um, I'm going to talk through the Randall bag and then we've got Neil he is actually in the building and I have been told he's threading up the sewing machine so I'm about to go and just have a little check to make sure that it's actually sewn up correctly um, so he will be with us um, just after we've we've done that so I will see you back here in a couple of minutes time like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page sewing street have our very own app you can now watch and shop from anywhere simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet then log in or create an account and you're done you can watch us live from anywhere Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. I'm Becky Alexander Frost and I own a pattern brand called RJF Makes. RJF Makes is my initials which is Rebecca Jane Alexander Frost and most of you might know me as Baffa in the studio when John and Vic say our Baffa when I would message in. Favourite thing to make? I think people know me by now. I like to make bags as you can see I've got a few bags behind me. Um, most of my patterns are bags, um, however there is a few craft style patterns available as well. Claim to fame, I used to previously be on another sewing channel <laughs> with John and Vix and the team, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, basically I used to work alongside some famous um, pattern designers testing for them. What got me into sewing was my mom. Um, when I was five, I was um, standing next to her while she was sewing some bridesmaids dresses for me and my sister. And basically I asked if I could um, learn to sew. She said I was a bit immature, still immature by the way. Um, she said I'm a bit young to learn her words and basically she said maybe when you're a bit older so my when I turned eight I basically learned to hand sew and by the age of 11 I had my first sewing machine I'm now in my late 30s but still act that eight-year-old my favorite tools or top tips so I have two best friends one's called the bulky sea maid which is this and one is called Quilter's Day. This will help anybody, the bulky seam made will help anybody if you've um, got something bulky going underneath your presser foot. This will stop any stitches from jumping and basically missing a stitch. Now this is my best friend when I would come to put in zips and you'll see me use this a lot, I mean a lot. Thank you ever so much and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Keep up 
up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. And welcome back to Sewing Street. Um, sorry to start with the, with the break was so long. I was trying to sort Neil out, honestly. He said, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. And he had it all, oh, it was all over the place. Anyway, we're sorted, we're sorted now. He will be on shortly. Um, so because of weather conditions today, um, Barbara hasn't been able to come up. So she was going to demonstrate how to do this beautiful, beautiful roundel bag. This is one that we've done in the past. Obviously, Barbara's still got her um, samples that she'd all prepped and all ready, but because of the snow, she hasn't come up today. So this is the, um, the bag that she was going to demo today. We've got some beautiful bundles for you. So let me go through. But to start with, we have got the big bundle, this one, of vinyl. So look at so if you love vinyl fabric, we have got a bundle of one, two, three, four, five different colours, half a metre of each, but you are going to get half a metre for free. So you've got the lovely baby pale blue, like a sky blue. Then you've got this beautiful vibrant pink. Let me put them there, look at that. I'm going to lay them all together. These are Gorgeous. You never normally see these colours in vinyl. Normally it's sort of navy and brown, isn't it? And look at the purple. Actually, I'm thinking, how well do those two go together? You'd make a beautiful bag with those, couldn't you? The pur those two, but actually the three look really nice. So there's the baby blue, the um, pink, purple. Then we've got yellow. Whoa, look at that. Love that one. That's gorgeous. Um, my car is exactly that colour. And, and um, my coat. A bit of a yellow person. I tell you what, a yellow car. A bit of a yellow person. Love yellow. And then you've got a, a neutral, um, just a very pale sort of sandy beigey colour. But look at that. 1996 for five half metres of vinyl. Let me show you the width of it. I mean, that's amazing for under, under £20. Look at that. It is super wide. Beautiful, isn't it? So if you want to add to your stash or you know someone who likes bag making and you want to think, oh, I'll just give them some um, vinyl to get started. Half a metre of that is free. Absolutely perfect for bag making. And it's a really, that works out at 3.99 a metre for half a metre. Um, but it's really thick, it's very, very sturdy, so it's ideal for bag making. Brilliant if you just want to use it for the bottom of a bag, you don't have to use it for the whole bag, or maybe just the straps, or just the, the bits that you put around the loops, you can use it for all different things. Um, perfect, it's wiped clean as well. Really good for, uh, just even like a tote bag. This is beautiful, isn't it? 
We have never, this is the first time we have ever put all of these to colours together in a bundle and then giving you the discount as well. And with free P&P &P day, be rude not to. Gorgeous, isn't it? So that is our brand, brand new vinyl. So we wanted to give that to you say so special offer. Stack up your vinyl stash. I love that. There's so many things you can do with it. Don't forget the free PMP. The code is SS Cyber, C Y B E R. You need to pop that in when you check out. If you've forgotten to, don't worry. The next time you check out and put something else in, you can put it in. Or you can give the call centre a ring on 0800 001 4433. But I'd love to know what you're going to make for it. There are so many things. It doesn't have to be bags. It could be anything. There's so many different things that you can make with this vinyl. I would love to know what you intend to make or what you or what you have done. Send us a message um, or put it onto the Facebook fan page. We'd love to see what you've made with it because it is gorgeous, isn't it? Right. I'm just going to go through. Oh, it's 100% PVC. It has got like a fabric. Um, let me just show you a slight fabric feel backing on it as well, though. It's not like PVC feel on the back. Mm. Oh, we just had a question from Carol who says, will you be doing gift vouchers this year? My daughter and me is a great fan and a voucher would be an ideal Christmas present. Um, right, we all, yes, we do do um, gift vouchers and we do them all year round. So let me show you where you are, where they are. If you go onto www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down. I mean, look, it's all Black Friday things at the moment. But if you go all the way down, keep going. And there you see the bit that says gift cards. Click on there. And then that's where you can buy them. Now, you can choose. So you can do a post-it one. And they actually get, and you will be sent a physical gift voucher that you can then give it to someone. But if you don't want the postage or to save time or it's a last minute gift, you can email it instead. So choose. So this is the emailing option. Um, £10, £25, £50 or £100. Or you can choose. So if you want to do, could you do £37.50? Should you want to. Right, so any for anything between £10 and £200 you can put onto there. And then you put in their name, all of the details that are listed there. Oh, and then it goes straight to them and you can pick. Gosh, that's good, isn't it? So you could put on there 25th of December. And that is when, so they will then have an email to them on that date. Oh, at the time as well. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant, isn't it? I, th I hope that helps, Carol. So, but if you do want it as a physical printed one, choose that option. But it, you know, those sort of gift vouchers, I've not seen them before where you can time when they arrive as well. And it works. And you can use that gift voucher on Yarn Lane and Sewing Street either. Message from Derek. The vinyl looks amazing. I've never used vinyl before, but think it would make a flamboyant messenger bag. It certainly would. Mm, send us the pictures, particularly if you make a yellow one. That would be a very flamboyant. Yeah, and it's lovely. It is. A, it's a really nice quality um, PVC as well. We've also got a tapestry bundle for you as well. We know how much you love the tapestry fabric, so we've bundled it together. We have got one, two, three, four, five half meters of tapestry fabric. And you get half a meter for free. Let me show you. It's very wide. It's very thick. It's the sort of thing to just compare for you that you would see if somebody was going to cover like a dining room chair. It's that kind of thickness. I mean, we use it. Look at how wide it is. It's 150 centimeters. Now, we use it a lot in bag making. But um, if you just think of the heavyweight, I mean, fantastic for curtain making. But it is that beautiful weight. So it's heavier than your normal canvas fabric. It's woven, it's beautiful quality. Now in this bundle, you are going to get um, these prints. So you get this geometric one. Then we have this one. I love this one because it's a bit um, like illusion. It looks 3D, you've got all the squares. Then we have it as well in a smaller version, again 3D. 
Then you get this beautiful large, I mean, again, this looks a bit illusion, doesn't it, with the, the way that works. You get this one, all these lovely shapes. And then you get this like, kind of Aztec. I'll open that one up a bit more so you can see the print. This one as well, that's like an Aztec type print. It looks, do you know, it goes Mary Poppins carpet bag to me. Gorgeous, isn't it? So if you want this bundle, half a metre for free, so only £23.96 pence for five half metres. And remember, it is 150 centimetres wide, so you can do quite a lot with this. Beautiful fabric. Don't forget to pop it in your basket and check out. These are very popular and we are limited in the number that we have because we put only put these bundles together specially for you today and we only have a limited number. So if you want them, you need to put them in your basket. Right, if once everyone has checked out of these bundles, we have less than 10 available. Oh, we've got a question. Good morning. I love the vinyl fabric bundle. Can designers do some demos with the fabrics? Thanks, love from, what, I can't read, Jelena. Yes, we will try. I mean, these are brand new in, so we will try to do that for you. I mean, obviously, we were going to be doing a bit of a demo with it today um, with Barbara. That was the plan, but obviously because of the weather, she's not here. But we will be doing it, don't worry, because these, these colours are brand new in. So we will be doing something with them to show you what you can do with them. Um, can we send a voucher to another Sewing Street customer if we don't know their email? So it's a bit like a secret Santa. I don't know. To be honest, I think the best thing to do is phone customer services and ask them. Yeah, or yeah, sneakily get their email address. I'm not sure how you do that. But I'm not sure. I think it's probably best to ask them. I, I don't know whether it would be... Um, giving out emails whether they be allowed to. I, I don't know. I think you probably need to phone the call centre. There are only five of these beautiful bundles left and 19 in baskets. Right, we're going to go have a quick look before we get that kneel on um, through the bags. So this is what the bag looks like. It's a beautiful bag. It features um, a PU handle, which is lined with the tapestry fabric. It's got this lovely that goes all the way around the side, all the way around the base. So it's lovely, you could easily put it down. Um, it has a drawstring top. Oh look, we've got a picture of the one that Barbara has made, which actually is this colourway that I'm going to show you. And this is where she's used the vinyl fabric for it. So in the kit, so this in the kit, you get the full pattern and instructions exclusive to Sewing Street, a metre of the chestnut vinyl, a metre of the dark red vinyl and half a metre of brown cotton that's used to line it. So if you want the picture, the one that Barbara sent us of the chestnut and the red, this is the bundle you need. It's only 33 99 That's amazing. So in total, you're getting two and a half metres of fabric and the pattern for 33 99 for a whole bag, and that is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous, isn't it? I love the fact that I love the um the handles that there are gaps in, there are holes, not holes. That sounds bad, doesn't it? Spaces in it. We will try and get her back on to demo this because it'd be really nice to show. It. But it's just a beautifully constructed bag, isn't it? So if you want that bundle, the chestnut and brown and um, red, that's that one. We don't have the pattern on its own today. The only way to get hold of it, <coughs> May, what day? So we have we have um, demonstrated this bag before, if you want to see that, on the 9th of May. So if you put into YouTube, Sewing Street 9th of May, you'll be able to see the demo then. Right, the, ne the next colourway, we have grey, elephant grey, a metre of, navy blue, a metre of, Half a metre of pale grey that's used for the lining and obviously the full pattern. So because you're getting exactly the same quantity of the two, you can choose which fabric that you use that goes around the outside of the bags that's used at this section and which one that you use for this section because you're getting the same quantities. That's up to you. So that's the navy and grey one. Um, if you want to do a little bit of tapestry fabric in yours, 
and canvas. This one, you get a metre of the Aztec canvas. Oh, it's always lovely. Then you get a metre of, this is canvas, this isn't just your cotton fabric, this is canvas. So this is used, again, you can choose which way round you do it, whether you have, because you get a metre of that as well. You can choose which way round they are. And then you get half a metre of the lovely vibrant blue that's used for the lining, and obviously you get the instructions as well. That's if you want to make it in that colourway. That's gorgeous though, isn't it? I like that. Because look how the pale blue picks out part of the Aztec design as well. I think that works really well. And then finally, the other one that's on this end, you get um, a metre of this tapestry fabric. Harlequin, I think that one's called. Stunning, isn't it, that one? Then you get a um, metre of this. This is a di slightly different PU. This is a lightweight. This is the one that's used in the bag I was showing you in an elephant grey. And then you get half a metre of grey lining fabric and you get the full pattern. So all you've got to do is choose. And remember, you can choose which way round you do them as well. So, um, I mean, you know, it's a shame we can't do the demo today, but weather conditions and all of that, so it's like a bit snowy out there. But it's a really good chance to get hold of this, these kits today, because remember, it is free PMP &P all day today. So exciting. And the pattern is exclusive to us, so if you want to make this gorgeous bag in the colourways I've shown you, this is the only place you can get hold of it. Isn't that lovely? Don't forget as well the... Um, Bundles, have we got any of these left, Kat? Tapestry bundles gone, all gone. Vinyl bundle, have we got any of those left? Still got a few, but not many. So if you want the vinyl bundle, you do need to check out. Right. Oh, sorry, I've got to show you all the colours. Pink, purple, my yellow, my favourite. Pale blue and neutral. Gorgeous. I'm thinking patchwork bag. Handles, base, sides, back, all different colours. I think that would look gorgeous. Right, we have Mr. Neil Garrett is in the house. So we're just going to swap over. Not swap over as in he's going to do this, but swap over my fabrics. We have got a whole selection of face covering kits for you. So obviously at the moment we've now been told that we have to wear face coverings again in shops and public transport from tomorrow, from Tuesday, so that's tomorrow. So um, if you're anything like me, you've got to find your face mask. I mean, I've still got loads of them, but they're all in the bottom of pockets and handbags and things. So if you want to refresh your face covering supply, this is the time to do it. Um, I'm just going to go through the different kits that that we've got. Now, first of all, we have got this Blyseline interlining fabric that is used in fabric. So the way you do a face mask, you have to have a lighter layer of cotton, an inner layer of cotton. And then by having this extra layer, you don't have to have this, but this provides that extra third layer of protection. But it's very thin, but it, it, it is um, a filter. It doesn't add the weight. It, it's not polyester. It won't, it won't make it all hot and sweaty, but that extra layer adds that little extra layer of protection. We have got this available in half metre pieces by the half. Yeah, in half metres. So two ninety nine. Now, every time in the past, well, we've put this on there, it just flies out. So if you want it, you need to pop it in your basket. I mean, it doesn't have to be used just for face coverings. It is an interfacing, but it's very lightweight. It's a sew-in, it's not an iron-on, and it's absolutely perfect to put that third layer to give you that little bit of extra protection. And Neil is going to show you in a minute how it's used, because he is now an expert at making face masks. Can we just say hello to Neil for one moment? Morning, hello. Neil. You all right? How are you feeling about the face masks? Yeah, I'm feeling like fired up, ready to go. Fired up and confident. Have you cut all of those out yourself? Yeah, you can tell I've cut them out by myself <laughs> because um, it looks like a child's done it. And when I cut the the backing off, I, I left the selvage on. Oh. I went right to the edge because I thought, you know, I'd be efficient and yeah, not waste any yeah, fabric, but I've actually left the selvage So you've got a little on. bit of stiffness there then. Yeah, mm. I mean, it looks fine. It just gives it a bit of character. And there's a slight difference in size on those <laughs> two as well. Well, there we are. I'm just going to use like an inch of um, I think seam allowance. Maybe fine. not. 
So the fabric that you've used is one of the ones that comes in the kit. Did we find that one? Oh, sorry, the um, interlining, sorry, the interlining, special interlining does come in the kit, doesn't yeah. it? So should we go through the kits? Right, I'm going to go through the kits and then we can get on to Neil. So this kit, the one that Neil is going to be working with is brand, is it brand new? Ooh, what is this one then? Oh, that's nice, isn't it? So you get half a metre of print fabric that you use for the outside of the face mask, half a metre of um, cream fabric that's used for the lining, and then you also get the half metre piece of, of the interlining that's used for the third layer, and you get black and white elastic that you use to tie them up with. Bit of both. You can make a lot. Now, I worked it out yesterday. You can make definitely four from this, but if you're very careful with your placement and you shove it all up, not necessarily into your selvage, you should be able to get six. But I was just working it out to give you a bit, but you could definitely get four. But if you cut carefully and sensibly, you should be able to get six from this kit. It is $12.99, which is amazing value, isn't it? So you can make yourself some new ones because I think really we do, we need new ones, don't we? I need new ones anyway, freshen them up. Um, which one next, the orange? So exactly the same in the kit, you get half a metre of the print fabric, half a metre of the inner layer interfacing, half a metre of the cotton fabric, and then two pieces, two metre pieces of um, this. Oh, and also, I'm just gonna get the template, you get, we forgot to mention, this is quite important really, you get a free template and instructions on how to make the face mask comes with the kit, in every single kit. So the template is used here and Neil has used the instructions and the templates so we know it works. Well we think it works. We think it works, <laughs> he's only cut it out so far, we, we hope it works anyway. <coughs> it will work for you at home, I, I honestly promise you. So that comes in every single kit. And that's a brand new fabric as well. Um, we've also got this lovely one. This is maybe, obviously you're making face masks for men, women, all different you know, ages as well. So we've got some more neutral ones. This is lovely neutral shades of blue charcoal and mustard. Again, you get the, this is the print fabric. You get the interlining and you get the cotton fabric for the backing, instructions and the elastic. Um, this one, just a really nice, soft, neutral, sage green colour. So we get everything, same things in the kits, all the other ones. Oh, these are under £10. £9.99. £9.99. That's beautiful, isn't it? It's a very, yeah, uh, green is a very neutral colour, isn't it? So if you, you know, you, they can't all be super bright and floral. Half a metre of that, half a metre of the, of the, um, of the cotton lining and half a metre of the interlining and the elastic as well. And the instructions, don't forget, every kit comes with instructions. This one, again, has the um, cotton lining, the interlining, and then this is the fabric that's on the outside. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Really pretty. Love that one. Is that a new one? I haven't seen that one before. Yeah, it's very nice. I mean, that's amazing. So for £9.99, you're getting a metre of fabric, half a metre of the interlining, and the elastic, and the instructions. Mm. Yeah, and you know what it's like the last time we had to do masks? The elastic just disappeared, didn't it? Couldn't get elastic anywhere, so this... Oh, I like this one. No way. This one is Liberty. But you're still getting half a metre. Liberty face mask. Ooh. That is a beautiful colour, isn't it? Really lovely, deep, deep teal. And I like the sort of all over, it's almost self-printed look. That's very posh. Honestly, you can buy you can buy Liberty face masks on Etsy for about eight or nine pounds. You're going to get four to six face masks for twelve ninety nine. Then sell them on Etsy. And then sell them on Etsy. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Just think, make a bit of extra money for Christmas. Yeah, a bit of extra money for Christmas. Buy lots of these. Sell them all on Etsy. Right, I've only got two more because we do need to get on with the demo. Then we've got a beautiful blue. Nice again. Because when you now set up your new Etsy business, you're going to need a choice of colours in blue. 
Mm. Like a denim blue, that one. That's lovely. And obviously, every kit comes with the half a metre of the interlining, the backing fabric, the elastic, and the free instructions. And the final kit is another Liberty. So hopefully the instructions work, because I wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't, message Neil. Um, in this one, you get half a metre of the lining and the interlining and leather Liberty. Oh, this is lovely. Isn't that lovely? So the Liberty ones are just a little bit more than the others, but oh, ooh, are they not worth it? That's 12 99 Right, one just quickly recap. If you just want to buy the special interlining fabric that goes between the three, we do have that available by the half metre, which will make you four to six face masks, and that is two ninety nine. It can be washed, so you can pop them all in the machines Oh, let me open it up. It's made from 100% recycled polyester fabric. And it is absolutely perfect for adding that extra layer of filtration between the outer and the inner face mask. Right, Neil, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Um, what did you do to start with then? Uh, well, I, I cut out the template. Yes. Um, I then uh, laid it out on the fabric and... Um, I think you'll be impressed with me on this one, Vex, because mm. I didn't just put it anywhere. Um, I actually put it so the pattern would flow. That's like I very put it the right good. way and next did to each other. Did you consider the grain line? I did. I asked someone in the office what the grain line meant. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously Ian knew. Obviously. Uh, well, so I'm Ian glad someone in the office knew what that meant. And then, um, yeah, then I, I put it on the grain line and I lay mm. it out to make sure that the pattern would flow across the mask so you didn't end up with, like, you know, a... I mean, you probably won't notice with this one, but some of them you'd notice. You might, you? you might with some of them, but also the fabric flows differently in different directions. If you cut one on a different angle, then you'd be on the bias and it would be all over the place. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of those people that, you know, when you're cutting a pizza, you know, mm. when I just, you know, put a random cut in, you know, rather than through the middle, you know, just to mess with people's OCD. So right. I, I did, you know, did it, did did it, it, properly. Did it properly. My cutting leaves a little to be desired, if I'm honest. I was in a rush, though. I was in a rush to get it done. Well, the interlining is a little bit more flimsy, so it's not as easy to cut out, is it? So you need to be careful with that. Is the Liberty sold out? Mm -hmm. Both of them. Just the tea, the tea oh, and Liberty. Got one sold, sold out, out already. So, I mean, I think for, ma for me, the masks, the good thing about this is, like, everywhere I go at the moment, I see discarded, like, the blue and oh, white medical masks. Oh, they're People aren't just they? throw them on the floor, you know, and there's the environmental concern. They've all... Although you'd think they're just dissolved, they've all got that little bit of metal in them, haven't they? And there's actually oh, plastic true. in there, because it's actually just a sandwich bag tie, isn't it, that's in the metal Oh, thing. is it? Yeah, I took one apart to have a look. <laughs> okay. So that's a piece of metal with a bit of plastic around it. So, you know, not very good for the environment. So these look a lot nicer because they're kind of unique and lots of people mm. say, where do you get them from? And also, you know, you're not going to discard them. They're not going to be a risk to the environment, like all the blue ones that are everywhere at the moment. Well, and you can give these to people as a present as well, whereas those blue ones, not really. No. Or well, sell them. Sell them on it. So yeah, but I, I do. we do get a lot of people who are beginners who watch us and say, mm. you know, love watching Sewing Street, but, you know, the pro projects are just a little bit outside what I'm capable of doing, whereas the nice thing about these is if I can sew it together, anyone mm. can, because uh, I'm not a sewer, obviously. Um, so, you know, if you're a beginner watching Sewing Street and you're thinking, oh, you know, what's a project that I can get into? This is definitely one that you can get. Nice, easy instructions, nice, easy first make and yes. something you'll actually use. You know, if you're an experienced sewer and you just want something to sew, you know, it's something you can donate. If you want to make it, then donate yeah. it to people yeah, if you've got true. loads already. Um, do it as a gift. You know, there's so many things you can do with it. Perfect. I'm, so, just put, I'm just talking to put off doing the sewing. Just, I, know, I, know, I know what he's doing. He's just right, what do I need first sewing. then, Vex? So, in the instructions, I haven't included about the interlining because that's up to you whether you put it in. So, Neil's going to show you what you do. So, you place your two outer pieces wrong, right sides down. Got this. Yes. Yeah. Then you take your two interlining pieces and put them on top. Right, sure I need to work out which one's which because they... There we go. There we go, yeah. Now, you can tack those together all round, or you could just pin them for now. So just put a couple of pins in. I'll put a couple in, of pins in. Just to hold them in, because it's not iron, it is sewing. <coughs> <laughs> That's a bit dangerous, they're all sticking out, spiky side out. Just put, I'll put three pins on, that should be enough, shouldn't it? So you could tack them all the way around if you want or pop them under the machine and sew them. It's a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so you could 
put it within the seam allowance if you wanted to sew them together or just get Neil to pin it or we'll be all morning. I reckon I could have done this without pinning it, I just hold it, you know, it's fine. Yeah. It's just to keep it together because it's obviously a very thin layer because you don't, what you don't want with some of these face masks, because I'm, when I first made one, I put three layers of cotton fabric, one on the outside, one on the inside, and it was too thick, I could barely breathe. So this means that you can actually breathe. When I was cutting these out, one thing that it did occur to me is that it, they'd be a lot easier to cut out with those electric scissors that I love. <laughs> which... No. no they were like, oh no. <laughs> Can but you imagine? They'd have been so much easier. I was doing it with scissors and I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm left-handed as well. So left-handed using right-handed scissors. We it, have left-handed scissors in the office. I know, but you know, it's like, it's so disorganised out there, no one could find them. Right, now put your two right sides together and, and matching just that centre curve. Yeah. I'm and pin that together, so you will have to take out some of those pins you've already put in. Make sure it matches up, though. Okay. So I just need to pin this together as a sandwich yeah. of four? Yes. Oh, I don't know. You could have told me that. Have you, have I mean, you can put the interlining yeah. onto the lining or the outer. doesn't really matter. That's up to you. Sold out. Oh, the other Liberty oh, one's sold out. Another one sold out. A lot of them are limited. A lot of them are getting limited now. I'm, I'm just literally copying what Hannah oh, right, yes. can't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's Kat, Kat. saying. Cat so. is saying a lot of the face masks are limited. I know we need more liberty ones. They're beautiful. Well, we put these together last night, didn't we? When we heard about the um... yeah, I mean, honestly, this was yesterday. We started doing this, didn't we? Yeah. So right. last night I wrote the instructions. Last night Lou laid them all out, and we got them printed this morning. Yeah. Right. right, now let, I want let you me loose on this sewing machine. Am I just sewing there? Just go yeah, I want it. you to sew from the top down to the bottom using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, please. But you can put the interlining onto the lining on the wrong side of the lining. It's entirely up to you. Up to you. It, it doesn't really matter. Message from Julia. I've made masks and machine sewn a decorative stitch down the front middle seam. It keeps the mask in shape and looks nice. Nice. I don't think we'll be asking Neil to do that today. I can do decorative stitches, I can yeah. do the alphabet using this machine, can't I? Can you? Yeah. Mm, yes, well, well, could you put your name across I'm the centre? Shall I do it? that? Shall I put my yeah. name on it using the... Yeah, that'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? If you are going to do that, do that before you sew them together. Although, really, you don't really want to be adding too many extra holes to your face mask. Am Reverse I just going... stitch at the end, please. Do I have to just hold it? Yeah, just hold that. Reverse and then ah, <laughs> <laughs> something pops out the top next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's done it, done it. Okay, now cut the thread. Has it got a little cutty thing? Yeah. Has it got a pair of scissors? Picture. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Lift the foot. I must say I'm used to the six eighty. Ooh. Oh, oh, I am. Yes, Neil only uses the six eighty. Oh, six eighty. Just use posh ones. Look at that. Look at. Look right. at that. Can we so have a close-up, Can we have a close-up? That, that is amazing, that but is. But Neil actually has sewn that seam. And why don't we say he's got a 680 at home? Right. I'm lying. Come Could on, you move come it to on. the left a bit, please? Come on, Elliot, get zoomed in. This is the best sewing you're yeah, going to see on sewing Yeah, but you're going to have to move today. over because you're crashing with the graphics. Come on, look at that. Look, uh, look at, at that. That's that. absolutely beautiful, that is. That's that is beautiful. The best sewing you're going to see today, that is. That is, it's got a... Yes, we won't mention that Stuart's in next. Neil's a better sewer. I'll, I'll give him some tips. Yeah, <laughs> give him a run for his money. Have you heard of the Neil Garrett bag making right, am book? I, am I sewing the other sides now? Right, so now open it up. No, you're not sewing no. Open it up. Open it up. Okay, now you need to do exactly the same thing with the lining. Put that to one side. <laughs> You will be using it later. Don't throw it to one side. So, okay, so just so I'm not going to bother with pins. I'm, I'm. Okay. I'm moving to intermediate stage now. Oh, he's moved now. on now. He's yeah. moved on. He's been so for five minutes. <laughs> doesn't need pins anymore. I would suggest you put maybe one at the end. No. Might help. Ooh. I need to clean my glasses. How many have we sold out of now? Blue dots and green dots have sold out. Oh, but the one that Neil's That's making, we've still out. got. Ooh. Because their new fabrics have got a little bit more stuff. Oh, I've, run, ooh, I've lost my microphone. Does that mean we can't hear you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank oh, God for that. Hang on a minute. Can you just only run me on the I need to just. Where did that go then? 
So, for the viewers at home, like Bex is the noisy one in the office. <coughs> I'm not actually. So, when when we're having meetings because we've got an open plan office, you can be there. Everyone's having a nice meeting. She comes out of the studio. She's like. Rah, rah, rah. Like you, we literally have to sit there and mm. wait for it to be quiet. Well, you're having a really boring, quiet and meeting. I just come on air and it's all exciting. She can't even eat quietly, <laughs> so she's there like rustle, 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 rustle. It's like Bex. I know, but if their meetings were more interesting, but they're always really boring and really dull as well. Neil is doing great. What a fab idea! So what, I, uh, having face masks or Neil? Oh, a fab idea to have a novice sewer making the mask. I'm sure it will help the others, So, Not yeah. no, novice, look at that stitching I'm intermediate. He is a, no, he is a novice. Well, I think, Level, honestly... Leveled up. I think the next, the only other stitching you did is when we made these last time, once. I have, I have shown a few things. I made that quilting block once, didn't I? Do you remember that one? You did. Did you not hand sew that? No, no, I used the machine. Was it a sewing machine? Yeah, I used the sewing machine. Did I not make that for you in the end? No. <laughs> I think you may have actually. Yeah, did you not think, start it? I think it's because I was there trying it and you just did your own thing. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. And I'll you do this and I was like, okay. okay. It, it was my design though. Right. And I feel Now, like what I... you would do now is press those seams to one side, but yeah. we won't do that because you don't press them open because that leaves um, a, a bigger gap for particles to get through. Press them to one side. We won't do that now. Yeah. Um, put them right sides together. Right sides. Open them side. out. Right, the kits are selling out. We only have three left. Hayley, you didn't make enough. I don't know. She had one job. Hayley one job. Didn't make enough kits. I'll tell you, I mean, everyone who's probably, every, all the regular viewers will have heard this story before. But I'll tell it again anyway because. Oh, go on then, go on. Tell us a story. Tell us a story. You're, um, pinning those together. No, so, so this is the very first time I did any sewing. And when I, when I first started at Sewing Quarter, the old channel, the old I had a hole in my, jean, in my jeans pocket and every time I put something through, it fell down my leg. I thought, that's a bit irritating. And someone said, well, you work in a sewing place, you should sew it. So what I thought I'd do is, I thought I'd sew it while I was wearing it. So I got the pocket out like this. And I can't believe I wasn't in that. I got thing. into Why the sewing machine and I was like, zzz, sewed it shut. And I was like, hey, I fixed this. Put it in, tried it, working, put my keys in, brilliant. So I was so smug, I was like, this is brilliant, this is so easy. So it was only when I got home and I went to get undressed, I realised I'd sewn my jeans to my boxer shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't so smug then. I had to literally wash those jeans and wear them with the same pair of boxers oh, for a few you didn't unpick them then? <laughs> I did eventually. Was, it was just a joint. I, cut, I did cut them out eventually, yeah. But yeah, for a while it was... Uh... Try and match up the seams first. No, open them out completely. I know, I know. And then match the seam. If you pin them together at the top and the bottom seam. You can't, because it's like curved. I know. Five left of the kit that um, Neil's working with. Message, I would love a mini series for beginning. Bex teaching different projects and Neil demonstrating for us. If Neil can do it, anyone can. Do you know you're absolutely right. So we'll do bar jello quilting next week then. Yeah, no problem. I can yeah. do that. Right, I've, I've put the, those are together now, Beck, so I'm just ready to do a bit more right, sewing. Right, you need to now sew them. Just sew them down the edges. No, no, not all the four layers. They've got to be opened out. Oh, you want me to go around the edges like that? <laughs> I've got gotcha. you. And leave a hole at the end to turn it through. <laughs> um, you start at one end. No, he hasn't read the instructions. Did you read the instructions? Start right. at the centre of one side. Yes. I don't know if you know how men work, but we don't do instructions. No. We look at the picture and go, yeah, got this. It's like when you get a new telly, isn't it? Oh, dear. Right, you need to sew all the way round one side, but you've got to leave a gap in one of the short ends. Now, look, there are lots of you who have got these in your baskets. You need to check out, because if someone else checks out, it just whizzes out of your basket and it goes to somebody else. So if it's in... Pardon? Is it, it is a quarter of an inch seam allowance, isn't it? Oops. Is he not done a quarter of an inch? Uh, Neil, you are sewing that a very strange way. <laughs> why? What? Is that how left hand? No, why are you not sewing it? So the fabric's on the left. I didn't know it had to be on the left. I didn't know there was a convention, you see. I'm a... <laughs> I've just realised you didn't do the other one like that, though. I don't know. Right, um, well, when I said I'm left-handed, I'm not fully left-handed. You see, I'm. Um, I'm. What does that mean? I'm neither-handed. I know, but you're normally when you sew, 
you have the fabric on the left, but you've got your fabric on the right. Yeah, there's nothing normal about me is the Bex. Right, so when you make yours, please try and use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and preferably have your fabric on the left. So when you get to the other end, you need to leave a gap. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. I know, Hayley's, Hayley's had to leave because she can't watch anymore. Is she in the gallery, yeah. is she? She was there, yes, she? but she's left. But when you did the other one, you didn't sew it like that. Well, I just fancy, like, you know, shaking it up a bit, bit oh, you know. Oh, dear. <laughs> right, all the kits have now sold out. Well, so we're just going to sell Neil, who's $2.99. Are you going to crash but the he price? Doesn't, he's not very good at sewing, <laughs> so I'm not sure you want him, and he only eats crisps. Um, Flyzeline interfacing, two ninety nine for half a metre. Don't forget to leave a gap in the other I've end. Left a gap, don't I can't believe he's sewing it this way round. Has anyone ever seen anyone sew that way round? Right. Honestly, this is going to turn out absolutely fine. Well, yeah. I mean, it would. If, it'd be better if you used a regular. Hang on, I can. Don't just. <laughs> Right, this is not a very good day. Can you imagine if we had somebody on there? This is awful. Perfect. Let's just cut that off. <laughs> it was it was excess. It wasn't needed. What about the elastic, Neil? No, don't worry. He hasn't gone that wrong. Now, can you turn it right sides out? Now, if you're making this at home, I would suggest it says in in the instructions, clip the seam allowances, particularly around the curves, because then it will lie flatter. But um, we won't get Neil to do that. <laughs> I can't believe you just Come trimmed on. it Come off. On. Oh, it's all wrong. We'll just trim it off. The thing is, it's like it's like people think so has to be the exact. I think you know the space of people who just want to be a bit more, you know, creative. Yeah, yeah. yeah just you know, yeah, just, be... just go for it if you want to sew with the fabric to the absolutely the, size of the needle. Just do it. Why not? Um, I'm going to get you to iron that though. Have you ever done any ironing? I've never done any ironing. We haven't even got an iron at home. You're joking. No, it broke. What about if you want to wear a shirt? <laughs> do you... But I know, but sometimes, Neil, you do wear shirts. Well, I basically just buy a size that's slightly too small, <laughs> and then when you wear it, it just pushes all the wrinkles out, doesn't it? So. All right, top tip. Top well, tip. Well, don't bother you ironing. Just get the iron, because it will make a difference at this stage. You will need to get the board. You see the little board? Is this thing on? Um, it might not be. It might be plugged in, but you might have to turn it on. Okay, this is the iron. Board. Yeah. The no, when we moved out, the iron got broke and we never replaced it, so. What do you do if you ever go to a wedding? Or you don't go to weddings? I don't go to weddings, I always. Uh, is it on? I don't know, I'm going to put that down and I'm going to. It's warmish. Where's the on button? Um, isn't it plugged? Is the base plugged in? Yeah, the base is plugged in because it's lit up. Oh, okay. Right, well, just put your. Um, Maybe turn it up a bit. You need to fold that edge in a bit. Well, poke out the corners where you've sewn it. Um, you see the turning tool, green sleeve? In there is a stick. A stick, turning tools. So go from the other end and gently push out the corners. So Because they do need to be neat, but just do it gently so you don't go all the way through the fabric. My, my stitching's so good it's not coming through back. So. <laughs> Oh, we've already got 10 minutes. It's going to finish it in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, that's lovely. So now you need to iron it, but make sure you iron it so that seam is lying right on the very edge. Just cranked it up, so... Yeah, Stuart was using that before, and he was ironing interfacing where you need to keep the um, temperature down a bit, so... Well, can I keep the instructions? I look, he's actually holding the iron correctly. <laughs> so we could actually, we're about sewing, I think we could have a little ironing lesson, couldn't we? But make sure the seam is lying. If you roll it with your fingers like that, that will push the seam on the edge. Does that make sense? It does, but. Right, should we just do the elastic on one end? No, no, let's get it done, let's get it done. Uh, well, do you this. need to fold the other end, because you didn't start in the centre and go around. You've got to fold those edges inwards and then give them a little press. So 
So now what you can do now, we won't have time for Neil to do this and I don't know what it looked like anyway, is you can top stitch all the way around the outer edge now because that just gives you a neater Two finish. Two seconds, I can do that. Okay. You need to fold that, those edge, yeah. those more edges inwards. The bit that you haven't sewn, yeah, you've yeah. got to fold those in. Don't worry, I'm on this. No, but they're still sticking yeah, out. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know what I'm doing, trust me. You know, fold these in like this, No, yeah? no, the other ends. This end? Yeah, you've got to fold them in a bit. Like, in like that? Yeah. Ah. Because you didn't, because what you should have done was started just off centre of what that side and then gone all the way round. Does that make sense, sort of? Yeah, I'm, I'm on it, I'm on it. And then give it a little press. Now, do you want to do the top stitching? Because that is an optional extra. Let's go for the option extra, yeah. Okay. Well, just pin those bit, two bits together so that when you top stitch round, just put a pin across those. Just the one. So, top stitch, you need to go all the way around the edges, doing it from the right side, but only like a couple of millimetres in. Yeah. That's better, the fabric on the left of the needle. Listen to your uh, feedback bit. <laughs> Take it slow. <laughs> now this helps to hold the lining to the inside and it makes the seam line right on the edge so you get a need to finish. It also makes it a little bit more decorative as well. You nice to get some contrasting stitching. Yeah, if you don't like top stitching, you don't have to do it, but it just will give you a neater edge. You could use a little bit of a contrast thread. Or like no idea. The, um, the lady who messaged in before, she did a bit of decorative top stitch. So these face masks, the way that it's designed, they're slightly shaped, so they will go over your nose. If you do want to put um, a nose piece in, you can insert that inside before you sew it all together. People often use just bag ties for those. Things go nice and slow. Nice speed control there, Neil. Thanks. Don't forget to pivot the needle. I'm very impressed. I didn't think you'd go for the um, top stitch option. I don't want to wear this as soon as I finish it. I want this to look good. This will be... Oops. You could wear this to McDonald's when you go and get your lunch. Yeah. Yeah, Kat says she'll have a milkshake. Oh gosh, I am laughing so much at the, mm. <laughs> at the face mask mm. demo, Elaine. Honestly, did you see him sewing? I can't believe mm. he had the fabric on that side. The I, problem was, is I was talking about the kits, I didn't notice what he was doing until it was too late. What? Should have been standing next to him. I don't know if anyone's like, noticed, but like, when I'm concentrating, I stick my tongue out, so I'm really <laughs> trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question from Carol. Has he got his tongue out yet? Good morning, Rebecca and Neil. Well done, Neil. When else could you let us, and what does that say? When able, could you let us know when the previous Rondell bag demo was, please? Sorry, it's so small, the text on that. 9th of May is when it was on, or the 11th of October. So if you just put that into YouTube, you'll be able to watch them back. 9th of May, 11th of October. Yeah, I'm sorry we won't be able to do it. Weather, as Stuart says, snow, snow. I think actually the snow's gonna go today. And the temperature's going to increase, which is a shame because I do like a frosty morning. Are we nearly there? Yeah, yeah. Did you reverse stitch over the end? Yep. Definitely. Vanessa thinks you've got a great job. Now, could you give it just a little press? Because when you've top stitched, you really do disturb the fabric and it just helps if you give it a little press. Um, that's just a little one. Perfect. Brilliant, this is. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> and just says, well done, Neil, sewing and ironing live on TV. Hey, look, it's, it's looking like a mask. It's lovely. Could you trim off the thread ends? Right. Now, turn one of those short ends over by an inch to the wrong, to the lining side and give it a little press and then pin it. By an inch. That'll do. When you're at home, could you measure that? Although, the fact that Neil actually trimmed off the edges of his because his seam allowance was all right, then I don't suppose it matters too much. Um, Pin that down. A 
and then do the same at the other end. Now I, I put a bigger casing on here because people use different lengths of elastic, um, widths of elastic. Also, if you don't want the knot to be seen, if you've got a bigger casing like this, it means you could put the knot inside it because then you often want, you might want to adjust that. Right now, top stitch that down, but close to the turned over edge. From the top, uh, from the top of the mask? Yes. No, turn it round. I like doing it that oh, way. Oh, no, from the, because you need to be able to see the turn, no, not from that, so that uh, side. That Otherwise you can't see where to do it. So close to the outer edge of the turnover. Uh, it, then you can put the elastic knot inside the casing because sometimes, although you knot it, you need to adjust it later, particularly when you wash them, sometimes you need to adjust it a bit. Don't forget your reverse stitch. Do my reverse stitch. Marvellous. I mean, and that's, the that's same not brilliant. No. Shall I cut that a bit off? No, don't cut that a bit off because that will be a look rubbish then. Just hold the, keep the top bit steady, you know, when you start it, make sure that's right, and then it will be right at the bottom as well. He's got two minutes, don't forget to reverse stitch. You'll come undone. All the way down to the bottom. I wonder if we've got a safety pin. Let's have a look in your little pot. I've got some on my desk, but I don't think I've got one in here. Uh, I haven't got one in there. Right. Give it a little press and you're done. All you've got to do is thread the elastic through the ends, but I don't think I've got a safety pin. Hello. Question from Louise. Oh no, the kits have all sold out. Any chance to buy the instructions on their own, please? We'll have a... I don't think so. I think they will be coming with the kits, but we'll try and put some more together. And we, we can do it very we can, quickly. We can put some more kits together, I think. We'll put some more together, don't like we'll worry. Like just different fabric choices. But they'll just have different fabrics. I think we should try with a bit more liberty, because I'm loving that. Where's my elastic? See if you can thread it through. I, we haven't got, I can't find a safety pin. Sorry. How much elastic do Very you impressed, Neil. Is Rebecca doing a flying demo tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, good point, good point. Yeah, he can fly. My hobby's a bit cheaper than his, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I say, though, but it probably is. It, it probably isn't, no. He's doing very well. Yes, if you don't have a safety pin, use a stick. Poked through your elastic, that's great. That is ingenious. Right, how long does this need to be, Bex? Um, Depends on your face, doesn't it? Yeah, put it around your face. About 20 centimetres is usually about right. Depends how far your ears are from your mouth. Yeah, it does. That's very true, isn't <laughs> it? I reckon that'll be enough. I mean, <laughs> Haley's would need to be quite long, wouldn't they? To, oh, to go around her ears. To get her over her ears. <laughs> that's really mean, isn't it? Haley hasn't got big ears. I think that'll be fine. That'll do. They tie it together like that, yeah. No, tie the two ends together. That's what I'm doing. I just left that out. Oh, okay. Sorry. I couldn't see under, under your hands. It looked like you were tying it the other way. And then thread the other bit through the other end. And just shuffle me not round. So no one can see it. Yeah, you've actually only got a minute. Oh, it's popped out the bottom. Because Stuart's waiting. He's waiting. I've come for my lesson. Have you come for your lesson? What would I you like to learn? Sewing lesson. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the nut just keeps popping out. Should we do like just musical chairs? So Neil can move to here <laughs> and he can um, <laughs> teach you. Because yeah. he knows now. He knows how to do it. How to iron too. How to iron? Yeah. I can't believe that. He's not done ironing before. <laughs> I've done ironing on air. I've just done iron at home. Oh, Neve says, my favourite demo ever. Well done, Neil. He has come on, I have to say. Well done, Neil. Amazing job. He has done really well. I mean, um, I think he just needs a little bit more practice. But look how quick that is. I mean, he did cut them out in advance, but they don't take that long to cut out. But in 30 minutes, he's made a whole face mask. As a beginner as well. Yeah, I mean, if you know how to sew, that's something. I mean, if you make know how to sew, it'd be even quicker. But as a complete, well, he's not a complete beginner, but quite a new person at sewing. Right, should be able to right. model so we're going to well. have, Hayley's talking about re-kitting these now. We'll let you know. 
Look at that. Yeah. Three. That's amazing. All well done. done. Well ready done. For, Thank you so much. Ready for going shopping tomorrow now. So much for that. You've had a sellout show. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <coughs> that looks lovely. Could you have a look at the camera so people can see it properly? Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Me on slightly, the mask. Can you move slightly to the left? Hang on, I'm just, just putting these pins sa safely. Slightly to the left? No, on the profile, I want to see on the side. Oh, you want to see on the left? Yeah. Do you want me to do my right? catalogue pose? Yeah, like that. And then to the right. And then <laughs> cover your nose a bit with it. Perfect. The elastic's a bit loose. I, mean, I think, it? yeah, you need to tighten that. But it's always worth doing it that way because it's easier to tighten it. I not think we've got some it. clips as upsells as well, if you look on the website. The little clips that go Oh, those, do we? I think oh, so, okay. yeah. Oh, Glennis has messaged in, bought the face mask pack. I only purchased it as it was Neil demoing. I loved it. Please do more demos, Neil, from Glennis in Birmingham. That's it. Well, we should have got him doing this Rondell bag. He's now an expert. Yeah, I could have knocked that together, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Well, thank you very much for joining That's us. That's okay. If, so if you go to the website, um, you can... Oh, there's the face mask. If you type in the word face mask in the website, there's the nose strips and the, me and the white silicone mask adjusters as well and all the other bits and pieces that you need for them. Um, so if, do you think we'll be able to get some more kits? I think so, yeah. I'll, I'll speak to her when we want to come up and uh, see what we can put together. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Right, well, thank you so much. No worries, thank we'll you. you. Right, coming up after the break, we have got Stuart, who's going to be demonstrating how to do um, Debbie Shaw's kitchen accessory set with an oven gloves and tea and blah, 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 tea cosy, couldn't get the words, in brand new colourways. Thank you for joining us for this hour. I hope you've found it entertaining. Um, I certainly have. And I will see you back here in a couple of minutes' time. Hi, I'm Claire from Native Lighting. I set up Native Lighting 18 months ago when I realised there was a real lack of craft lights in the market that were high quality, affordable and modern. Not only do Native Lighting lamps give you the perfect lighting for your craft, but they also look amazing in your home as well. I started to train as a florist when I was much younger and it re made me realise how you need the light on all the different colours when you're trying to match the colours with the flowers. And that's what's really important with your crafting as well. I've been in the lighting industry for 10 years and worked in many different sectors, but my heart always lies with crafting. I think that also comes from my time of training as a florist when I just used to love working with all the flowers and the colours and how different they could look in different colours of light. My top advice would be, when you're thinking about buying a light, you need to think about where you're actually going to be doing your work. We've got lots of different types of lamps. We've got floor lamps, we've got magnifiers, we've got portable lamps, and we've got desk lamps. If you're sitting in a sofa or a chair, I'd suggest that you use one of our floor lamps. If you're working with intricate details, then have a look at one of our magnifiers. We've got three different types here. We've got our seven inch one, we've got our four and a half inch one, and then we've got a desk version here as well. All of those magnifiers have all three different color settings, including the really important daylight for your color matching. And they've all got brightness settings on them as well. If you work with a sewing machine, our Lumina lamps are absolutely amazing because you can bend and wrap them around the sewing machine, which is brilliant for when you're working on a sewing machine and you can get that light exactly where you need it. If you do Facebook Lives or you like to um, do video tutorials for people or you're doing teaching online, then our ring light is amazing for that because you can obviously use that, put your mobile phone in there and also that we've got a remote control which will operate that for you. You may have a cutting table or a wide area that you need to light up. Then I'd suggest you go with our, our task lamp here which gives you a really wide spread of light. If you're on the move, when you're working, then we've got a selection here of portable lamps. We've got our reverse lamp, our zigzag lamp, and our LED desk lamp. These are rechargeable, so it means that you can charge them up and then you can take them with you and you've still got light when you're on the move. Town Street have our very own app. 
you can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. And welcome back to Sewing Street. I hope you loved um, Neil's demo earlier. It was great, wasn't it? Now, we're trying to get some more face mask kits together. We're just struggling to get the elastic at the minute, so we're going to see whether we can put some together without the elastic. Anyway, we will let you know. Um, I just wanted to mention before we've got Stuart demonstrating um, Debbie's projects next is his panel. Don't forget, there are still a few left, amazingly. So this is the beautiful panel. Now, this is only 19 dollars 99 And it comes with the instructions as well. So there is the front of the bag. Beautiful. I mean, isn't that the most beautiful illustration? Oh, sorry. Right. Um, let it sew, let it sew, let it sew on the front. And then on the back of the bag, it's got this beautiful pocket. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? We have sold hundreds of these, but we did promise that we would stock up and get more this time because we know how many of you missed out. It is the most beautiful bag. It comes with a secret pocket. It's got handles. It's lined. It's absolutely gorgeous. All of the instructions are printed on the panel, everything you need. You'll need a metre of fabric rick as well just a plain cotton fabric to line it and some interfacing and um, h640 if you want to so if you missed out early um, earlier buy it now and then you can watch the demo later where Stuart explains exactly how to do it but it's absolutely gorgeous isn't it beautiful anyway this hour this hour is all about these gorgeous um, panels now we have done this before but this time we have got two brand new colourways. Um, so the kit makes a tea cosy, let me show you the picture, tea cosy, oven gloves and a pot holder. That's what the, what's what it makes. And they are all, the designs are all based on, Debbie collects these cow creamers, I love them, love cow creamers. And um, these are actually, these designs were based on her personal collection of them. Oh, am I, am I upside, am I upside down? Oh no, I thought it was. That bit was the other way around. So this colourway is a monochrome and mustard. So isn't it love? I love that. So there's the picture. Have you got the picture there? That um, That's what Barbara's made. Because Barbara's going to demonstrate it. But obviously she's got stuck with the snow. But this is what she made from it. It's beautiful, isn't it? So we've got the um, oven gloves. have got... Um, beautiful gingham on the lining and the cow queen is cream is in black and white the pot holder the front is in um, black and white the back is in mustard you've got an extra cow there just to use we've got the bias binding and isn't it lovely it's printed on the bias so that you know it's correct we've got oven gloves pocket lining um, tea cosy lining everything you need with extra cow creamers we've even got look on the tea cosy there's the cow and there's the tea cosy front, oven club pocket. So it's got everything that you need, all the panel pieces, easy to do. And it comes with full instructions, which explain exactly how to make it with lots of really, you know what Debbie's um, demonstrations are like, they're very, very clear photos, easy to understand and easy to make. 
Yeah, I mean, it's so it is so simple that Stuart got here at six o'clock this morning, cut it out, yeah. <laughs> cut it out, and it's just got ready to get it all, all done and So it's dated. an easy project. It's a beginner level. Yes. Yeah. And not only that, but also done an hour of your own show in between yeah. time. In fairness, we yes. could get Neil in to demonstrate no, it, couldn't No, that easy, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see him sewing on the right-hand side? Still can't get over that. I'm looking forward to getting my sewing lesson from Neil later. Oh, yeah. 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 You said he could teach us. Yeah, too. yeah. Probably won't take a, a, an ironing lesson off him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't iron at home, honestly. I know. Well, he um he didn't know how to turn the iron on. That was the funniest bit. It's probably a point of pride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I do know how to iron. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, Thank quite. goodness. And then when he got the seam allowance wrong, he just trimmed it off. Did he? Yeah. Honestly. Can you imagine? I don't know. And then he was sewing on the other side. Was he? Oh, so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the wrong... Yeah. Which I, I just... <sighs> Then I thought maybe it's because he's left-handed, but people don't. Even left-handed people no. do that side, don't they? My Sorry. job is safe. You, I think you're fine. So it's this is the other brand new colour, colour, colourway. Colourway. This is um, China Blues. This is the one that Stuart's going to be demonstrating with. I love this I'm one. in love with the blue. It's, it's so gorgeous, gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. I love that gingham on the inside of the oven glove. And then yeah. you've got the cow cream is in blue there. Um, for the, let me show you the tea cosy. Look, Tea Cozy's got the cows on. It's gorgeous, isn't it? But it's very kitchen, isn't it? With all this beautiful blue and white. I mean, I even look at the print that's on the bias binding. Mm, it's yeah. absolutely lovely, isn't it? It is really nice. And then there's the, um, the Tea Cozy lining. So that's the blue and white one. This is the one that Stuart's going to be demonstrating. So he'll show you what that one looks like. Again, it comes with full printed instructions. This is such a big panel, it's really hard to fold up. Brand new. And this is very fresh and lovely. Um, right, I'm just going to show you the other two colourways and then we can get on to finding out how to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one my favourite one is yet. Um, right, then we've got the pink. These are so big, these panels. Right. Oh, this is so pretty. So this is the um, the pink kitchen set. And the prints from this are actually taken from some of um, the cow creamers that she's got. Aren't they lovely? They've got when she originally did the show, she bought them all in. Look. It's, got, it's so pretty, isn't it? It's got all flowers in the hair. And then there's the, um, there's the tea cosy. Look at the cow on the tea cosy front. And then there's... It's so lovely, isn't it? There we go. They're gorgeous, aren't they? And it's saying, what's a cow creamer? It's a little china cow that's a milk jug or cream, I guess. Is it for cream or is it for milk? Obviously yeah, milk. I think for milk. Mm. Yeah. And then it's got a hole in the back here and that's where you pour it and then the milk comes out of its nose. Mouth. Mouth. <laughs> Yeah, because of his nose. Should have two holes, shouldn't it? Lovely. And appetising as it's well. It's so nice Early to in have the morning when you're having your breakfast. breakfast. And cows are regurgitating green But it does nose. come out of its mouth, doesn't it? Bizarrely. Oh, you're selling the dream Yeah, I'm there. selling the dream. I I'm love actually it. thinking, I really want a cow creamer. I don't yeah. have one. You've managed to put me off. Yeah, <laughs> I, but I want one where, they, where the cow, the, um, it comes out of its nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are really big because they're actually quite hard to fold up and then finally I'm using the instructions remember all of the panels come with the instructions and then finally we have the green they are all 28.99 each these are massive I like the green one that's gorgeous isn't it lovely check there um, that's what the green print looks like there's the oven glove pockets oh look at that one See, now I wonder whether the shape of your cow affects the flow of the cream, because that one's got its head up. Mm, Do you think? Elegant. Oh, but all the cow creamers used to have names. But So these are her original ones, so she's got a green one as well. That's so sweet, isn't it? 
Yeah, so my, that's my panel the had one. names at the top. Is it like sort of Betsy and Ermine Oh, Trude yeah, this one's called Daisy, Doris and, Pen Pen and Penelope. Yeah. No, they have got names. Mm. The pink one is called... No, I can't find... Um, Bessie, Clarabelle and Betty Sue. Mm. Names for cows. There we go. So those are the four colourways. Two of them, the charcoal and the mustard are brand new and the um, blue and the, the green and the pink we have done before. Now, you will also need um, some Thermalamp, which is in a pre-cut one metre pack and that is an insulated wadding, which obviously for the oven glove, glove and the tea clothes you will need to keep to keep it insulated. I mean, we would recommend two or three layers of that, to be honest, to um, protect your hands. It to put, it, for the oven gloves in particular, obviously, for the tea cozy, it will just keep it a bit warm. But the insulated wadding is made in a special way that it, well, it keeps things cold and warm, depending on which way you want it to. But um, we have got that on the screen, 5 99 for a metre of that. Is there anything else? No, that's all we need, actually, because you need 32 by 32 inches of thermal wadding, so that's more than enough. Lovely. Right, Stuart, what are you going to show us today then? Morning. Morning again. 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 Have you had Morning a fun hour? Morning, at home. I have. To be honest with you, I've been doing a little bit of knitting. Oh, have you? Uh, yes, what I have. Are you knitting? I have. Well, I'm knitting a Christmas present, so I can't say too oh, much. Oh, okay. Um, but it's it involves Aaron, Ooh. Oh, which I'm really bit of enjoying. Bit cables. It got cable? cables. Lovely. Yeah, it's got twisted cables, and it's got um, you know the kind of antlers. Yes. Antler cable. Yes. Mm. Nice. Nice, which I love. Oh, well, that's lovely. Yeah, and of course, watching Neil, too. Watching Neil. Which was a treat. Mm. 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 Did you like his method of if you get the seam allowance wrong, you just cut the fabric yeah. off? Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I've seen it before, but yeah. Yeah, I did it's a really clever way. Super. Isn't it? Who yeah. needs a seam allowance when you can just trim it off? Quite. Well. So, what did you. So, six o'clock. Thank yes. you for stepping in. That's all right. It's my absolute breach. pleasure. No problem at all. Well, it's a beautiful panel it's and beautiful, a really lovely way of freshening up your kitchen or your breakfast table. Mm. And I'm thinking, you know, over the Christmas period, we've certainly got people coming to stay. Yes. Um, Mum's coming to stay. Mm. Um, and so to freshen up the breakfast table That's for Christmas, fierce. very nice. Mm. Love a tea cosy. Really nice. Well, it, it, it looks proper, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm a bit lazy. I'm a bit of a mug in a... A bag in a mug person, oh, but yeah. when but I have people with round, people. exactly and we, and right. We actually make a cup of tea. We know we'll have a teapot. Exactly right, and I think the blue and white is so fresh, isn't it? Yes, um, it really is lovely, and um, it's always it's quite wintry, isn't it? Yeah, it oh, go really, you, really Ian. nice with That's kind of blue and white Ian's china. If you've got tea. maybe Cornish ware, or yes, if you've got, I've got loads of Cornish ware. Have you? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Thank you. It's I'm good, isn't tea it? We get made tea by the lovely Ian Munro this morning. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Lovely. We are being spoiled. I know. Um, yeah, I know. I love so. Cornish where it's gorgeous. Isn't and if it? you've got plain white um, china as well, that would be lovely. But uh, really gorgeous. So what I've done here is I've cut out the front and the back for the tea cosy. Yes. And I've left a margin around the edge. And I'll tell you why in a second. I've also cut out the linings which are so pretty that it would actually be worth making this tea cosy reversible. Oh, okay. So I would add an extra tab inside the lining so you can flip right. it through. Because oh, I think a that's good idea. I think that's too it pretty is. to I know it is mm. well, do you know what you could make two? You could make you? two tea cosies. Use your own lining. Yeah, you absolutely could. So I'm using regular quilt batting for this, which does have some insulating properties, of course. Um, but would be even better if you used Thermalam. Um, so I've got a couple of rectangles cut out. I'm just going to cut this in half. There we go. So I've just cut out some rough rectangles. And I love the fact that this uh, batting has got a fusible side <laughs> to it, which yes. does make our job a lot easier. If you're using Thermalam, just get your 505. Oh, okay and spray that. If you are going to spray 505, remember nice well ventilated room or even go outside if you mm. can bear the cold. Layer whatever you want to fuse in place on your batting first of all, flip over half, spray the batting not the fabric and then smooth that fabric back and then flip. 
and So what's spray. your preferred thing? Because I'm never really sure. Are you an, an iron-on an infusible interface? I in use a mixture. Or are you, okay. I use a mixture. So if I'm making something small, like tea cosy, bags, things yes. like that, H640 is my go-to. Right. I love it. I love it. Or I'll use something like Bosel in our form. Mm. Um, but if I'm use, if I'm making a quilt yeah. and I'm going to layer that, then I'm definitely a 505. And do you use 505 rather than tack? Because I'm just never sure. Well, I do a mixture, to be, to be honest with you. I'll spray base the quilt together, front mm. and back, and then I will just put a few extra sort of security pins in. Okay. Just to be on the safe side. But to be honest, 505 does really hold the layers and together And do you go outside well. and do it? Uh, no, I've got, but I've got a big studio. Oh, okay. So, so I've got a nice big space where I've, got, you know, it is very, very well ventilated. Does it not get? Because I haven't really used it very much. I've always gone outside. Cause, does it get on the floor? No, so long as you're spraying in a controlled oh, manner. Okay. Yeah, now I know. worry that I'd have it all over the carpet and everything. The thing to do when you're using the five o five. I mean, mm. it's all in the instructions, but who reads those? No, I don't. Uh, is 12 <laughs> to 15 inches which is here you know not here yeah that's true and, and I know that we're afraid of over spraying getting it on things we'll go outside if that's if that's your concern but if you spray too close what you'll end up with is wet patches oh, okay. and you don't get a nice even spray and what you want is a mist that covers the whole surface of the batting so that everything is adhered rather than little wet patches that just and they don't really even stick there oh, and then that can mean. clog up your knee Needle. Right. So 12 to 15 inches, spray as if you're spraying hairspray, so you want that even net, mm. okay, and then lay back your, your batting okay. on. Smooth it out. If you get any wrinkles at all that you've put in, you know, peel it back, respray, have another go. Okay. Um, but uh, no, I mean, it's terrific stuff. And then it won't gum up your needle or anything like that. Okay, so I've got my... Uh, tea cosy front and back I did to my uh, h640 and I've left an, a little extra all the way around that just makes it easier for handling and same with the batting I'm not going to cut that to size because these corners gives me something to hold on when I'm quilting yes yeah I'm also as I mentioned earlier on I'm not going to do a job three times no, so when I cut no, this we, out we properly like it's because it's ready right. to sew together yes. all yeah, right? no, it's, yes we love just, that so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mark some quilting lines um, on this and I'm going to use my ruler and a fabric marking pen. You can use an air erasable, water erasable mm. or a friction pen as well. Any of those would be absolutely fine. Um, and what I want to do here, I'm going to put a line. Now you, you could measure out and get a, you know, a really, really accurate 45 degree line, but I'm going to guesstimate. <laughs> guesstimate. I'm going to guesstimate. No one will be holding up a tractor to your tea cosy. Quite. So I'm going to put my first line on. And then what I'm going to do is measure out one and a half inches from that line. And I'm going to keep doing that across. So one and a half inches from the last line I drew. Now, if you don't like marking your uh, quilt, you could use a hero marker. I don't know if we sell them. I'm hoping that we, we used do. to. We certainly did. Have we got any Hero markers, Cap? Hero markers are ace. I love Hero markers. I think they're mm, genius. But if you haven't got a Hero marker and we don't sell them, mm -hmm. then I've also used quite successfully a butter knife. Not many people have butter knives. <laughs> it's anymore, one of those they? lovely sort of round curves. Yes. Nice and rounded, no serrations or anything no. like that. And does and that work better than a normal that. knife, even it's fast? Well, I just got don't serrations. want the serrations, just want a smooth but very firm edge. And just run okay. that along the butter ruler knife. back and forth, and that will create that sort of crease. So once you've marked them in one way, you can just turn it. And again, we want to sort of, you know, roughly. 45 degree or even I tell you what let me just find the 45 degree line no I'll just guesstimate <laughs> I'm just gonna guess I'm I'm flying by the seat of my pants today it's fine it's, it's not fine. a problem is it? well also I I'm gonna blame the snow well so I think we do get a bit hung up sometimes on things being precise and when they need to be like a seam allowance that's fine but yeah. when it's something like this it doesn't have to be precise does it it's, it's absolutely true. You know, I heard a great piece of advice many years ago, which was don't sweat the small stuff yes. 
And by the way, it's all small stuff. <laughs> oh, I've never heard part two yeah, of that. Part two, yeah. I particularly like. You that know. is true though, isn't it? But most of the time it really is small stuff we're sweating over. So once this is covered in tea stains, you really won't care whether it was 45 degrees or 47. So Kat says, <laughs> if it doesn't matter in five years, don't worry about it for five minutes. I love that. Mm. Yeah. Probably Good. won't actually. I'm going to have that attitude at Sewing Street. <laughs> <I'm> yeah. <not. laughs> Will this matter in five years? Mm. I used to have this brilliant boss who was, said the best way of organising paperwork was, you know, because we all get it in the at home, in the don't bin. we? She'd put it all in the cardboard box under a desk. And if you leave it there for six months, you don't need it anymore. You can just chuck it out. <laughs> but you haven't actually thrown it out. Are accounts like that? Yes, yeah, probably. I love that. Because then you, if you haven't actually got rid of it, then you haven't got rid of it. But after six months, you don't need it. Yeah, no, that's true. It's brilliant. It's very true. So I'm, I'm just attaching the walking foot to my machine now. Right. Um, when you're when you're quilting straight lines, even short runs, you really are better off using your walking foot. If you've never used a walking foot before, it's an even feed foot and it means that the fabric is being taken through the machine kind of securely top and bottom. Right. Stops any wrinkling or anything like that happening. Because normally with a normal foot that doesn't happen then no it, because your sewing machine feeds the fabric from the bottom only um the top layer of fabric can get sort of pushed along uh which isn't such a good look you can end up with wrinkles now to be time efficient here what i'm going to do <laughs> is kind of i'm not going to keep turning my quilt from from uh, you know one side to the other i'm just going to go up to the next line whatever's convenient really and i'll fill in any that i miss later on that's a good idea because i usually like start and stop and start and stop but with that you're yeah you're not having to well, you're not wasting as much thread as well no you? that's right it's just so the very next line yeah. i've come to now is this diagonal one here lovely do you think you end up filling them all in pardon me do you end up filling them all in doing yeah, that? Yeah, you should do. Yeah, I mean, I probably will end up missing one, but I'll just go and fill that mm. one in. That's but a I brilliant love, tip. I love it. I love a bit of straight line quilting. Yeah, I, I mean, I love free motion quilting, but there is something rather lovely about the regularity yeah. and the evenness, one hopes. I always really struggle with deciding on what quilting to do, because you know when you're doing a big quilt, you think, mm -hmm. should I just like this quilt all over it? Yeah. Or should I quilt round all the different pieces? and and never can decide. For, for my money, mm. the, the least exciting quilting, which almost sort of to me has no point other than holding the whole thing <laughs> together, is that sort of in the ditch quilting, yeah, which yes. is not meant to be seen and so embedded in that you literally cannot see it. Um, which, yes, holds the quilt together, but it is supposed to add the quilting is supposed to add yes, an extra true, element yeah. to the project. And also, when you're doing the in the ditch, I never get it all the time. So, Well, the thing with quilting in the ditch is it's become a bit misunderstood. So, so what it's been interpreted as, as by many quilters is that the, the, the line of quilting has literally got to sit sort of in the gap between the two fabrics, mm. somehow in that sort of space where the two fabrics meet. And the ditch is actually one side of that could be an eighth of an inch, yes, a sixteenth, you know, it yes. doesn't have to run down the middle. It's supposed to be the side that hasn't got the seam allowance pressed on it, which yes. is why it's lower mm. than the side that has, and that's the There's ditch. That's the ditch, right. And that's just a hangover. That is from hand quilting. Because if you're hand quilting course, through yes. lots of layers of yeah. fabric, you pick the side that hasn't got the seam allowances because mm. it's less fabric to push your needle through. So, you know, a lot of quilters get very, very hung up on trying to do the impossible. Well, also, <laughs> if you try and get it exactly straight, it never is. So you're no. better off not bothering well, doing like shadow quilting. That's or, right. Um, I've been quoted many times, I believe that straight is very overrated. <laughs> so... <laughs> so you know finished is better than perfect right mm. so I'm just gonna carry on this is a lovely if you want a kind of mindful project 
It's better. I love that though because it looks very traditional, doesn't it? Yeah. That quilting effect. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, per it's perfect for the tea cosy. Yeah, it is. It is. Now, if you don't want to do straight lines here, but you still want to mark and use your mm. walking foot, most sewing machines have got what I call what most most of us call, I think, a serpentine stitch. So that is a stitch. It looks a little bit like an elongated S on your stitch selector. Okay. Okay. And um, it's called a serpentine stitch. And just do that instead of straight lines. The middle of your foot, you want to aim for the line. Mm. Keep that on the line. And then your stitching will go, so if this is the line, your stitching will go to the side, to the oh, other okay. side of the line. So it's only a very slight... It's a very slight, slight meander wave. almost, yeah. Oh, I'll have to have a look at my machine. And... Um, it's mm. it's much more forgiving so if you go slightly on the <laughs> wobble <laughs> yes. um it's much much more forgiving it looks lovely looks rather more interesting than straight mm. cross hatching you know but um but cross hatching is yeah, we've lovely got a question from joe when i try cross hatch quilting i'm okay in one direction but when i try to go across the first slot i get little kinks at the end of each row help um I would say that's because you're not using a walking foot. Yeah. Yeah. So I've gone in all directions here, right, to fill mine in, and there's no kinks or anything like that. And that's purely because I didn't. Uh, I used a walking foot. If I hadn't, there would have been. Is like there any here, way round that if you haven't got one? By a walking foot. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly. Yeah. I, no, you that's know, fair enough. and this yeah. isn't about yes. selling you something. A walking mm. foot genuinely solves. An issue your sewing machine is designed to carry the fabric from the bottom mm. as soon as you introduce thick layers under that the the if you like the pressure from the bottom can't it can only it can only act on a certain amount of fabric you know right so once you start putting extra layers there's going to be some shifting between those mm. layers it's the same as if you've ever got a piece of polyester wadding in your between your two hands and try pushing it it slides from one side yeah, to the yeah, other okay. because of all that loft mm. inside is this the same when you put a quilt layer through your machine those layers are shifting, so you need something that's going to control the fabric from the top as well as the bottom. Yes, and your walking yeah. foot is effectively a second set of feed dogs that sits on the top of your fabric. So they're worth their weight in gold. Yeah, no, I did, but I succumbed a few years ago because it was mine was really expensive. I don't know why. Because they're not well, always, yeah. it just was. No, I mean, for my it's sewing because machine. Because of the model I've got or something. Me but, too, £110. Oh, it's just like, oh. But, yeah. um, but they're not all. They're not all like that. It just depends no. on the machine. No. But you're right, it really, it really made a difference. Yeah, yeah, And I it thought does. it was going to be something like, I don't know, something electronic, but it isn't. It's just... It, just, just a second set of feed top, dogs, yeah. Now on this one, rather than cross hatch, I'm just going to show you a different way that you might quilt it. So this is the larger motif. I'm sewing just inside the outer line, the outer right. print line. I mean like an eighth of an inch in. Mm. And that's just to secure the layers together for when I'm cutting out. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline quilt the creamer. Okay. okay, so this is enough quilting to hold it all together, um, but uh, it's, now what I am going to do is just reduce my stitch length because I'm having to sew around something mm. and to get me a sort of smoother line, I'm going for shorter stitches because of course there's no such thing as a curved machine stitch. Exactly. So if we want to sew around something very curvy, Shorter stitches will help us to do that more efficiently and, and more easily. You could also, of course, free motion around the creamer. But I'm keeping it real. I know lots of, lots of sewers and quilters kind of switch off the minute you mention free motion. <laughs> I think free motion is just something you need to try on something that doesn't matter to you. It's You've got to practice. Spare, it's just a spare piece of fabric because yeah. I did it one because I've... I love free motion embroidery, but I was really scared of free motion quilting. So I just one day thought I'm going to just do it on spare fabric and just yeah. went for it. Exactly. And it was easier than I thought it would exactly. be. Exactly. So there I've just outlined quilted. Well, literally just inside the print line of the creamer. 
Can we have a close up of that? And hopefully, what you can see is it's just increased oh, the definition. Oh, I like that. That looks lovely. It's just made the cream a pop. Yeah, really, it was particularly because <laughs> it's against that navy background. Yeah. It really shows up, doesn't it? Exactly. So, what I'm going to do now is cut out the front and back um, sort of more precisely. Remember, I've stitched just about an eighth of an inch, even less. Oh, I've even impressed myself there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to cut nice that out. Nice top stitching, Stuart. Thank you very much, May Martin. <laughs> May, have, May and I actually have worked together lots since the bee, and um, she's amazing. She's lovely. Isn't I she? absolutely love her to bits. She's What's so. What's she doing now? Oh, loads of good stuff. I mean, she's still, of course, teaching mm. uh, workshops. She's a teacher at heart and at soul. You know, right, um, that's her thing. She really is an amazing teacher. I would say, if you want to know everything there is to know about overlockers, May Martin is the woman. She is the person to ask because she's. She was telling me in order to know how the overlocker truly works, she took one to pieces. No. Literally stripped it down and then rebuilt it. Oh my God. That, and then I, I would do that and then it would still be in pieces. I know. And it'd be like, look, I finished putting it back together again and I've got all these bits wow. left. Oh, so she's teaching on that side. Yeah, she? yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, she just is fantastic. She's a nice, lovely lady. She's an she? absolute, and she's a, you know, a font of knowledge. <laughs> so I'm cutting this out now. Um, didn't take long to quilt it, did it? No, that was and really quick. A lovely extra I forgot, step. Did you have to go back and fill in any of those lines or did it all join up? There was one line. That's amazing then, isn't it? When you think of the thread ends that you've saved. Oh yeah, don't keep starting and stopping at either end. That's another reason to leave the extra little bit of, of fabric all the way around. Right. It gives you somewhere to travel. Yeah, true. Okay. Yes, because you can go off then. And you can, mm. you can. It's all about making the job easier. So that's done, front and back all prepared. Lovely. Now then, we need a little loop for lifting the tea cosy on and off. So you've got those bias strips. Now Debbie says to cut one of these strips down the middle and then fold it into a really tiny mm. little loop. Um, sausage fingers, <laughs> can't do it. So I'm using it the normal width. That's thin enough for me. <coughs> I thought you were hot fingers. Yeah, I've hot got hot finger nails, but I've got sausage fingers. Okay, hot fingernails, sausage fingers. <laughs> yeah. I have. Do you know, I do wonder how I managed to make things because I am incredibly clumsy. Are you? But then you obviously am. not when you're sewing. Well, kind of I am sometimes. I think so. Yeah. But, to get, but you're very neat and very precise, so maybe... I sometimes wonder how. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, I do. I've got really like, I'm going to be very sort of, you know, out there now and say I've got typical kind of man hands when I'm doing, you know. Okay. Yeah. They're not delicate. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just sewing either side of that little strip. So I've got a nice flat strip there. And this is eight inches. And I just folded it in half, wrong sides together, and then folded the raw edges in. I'm using a pale pink thread okay. for my quilting and my stitching. Mm. I might naturally have veered towards pale blue pe or white. Right, I wondered if that was a choice or it was just Well, it's become find. one. It's, it's become, it's a new become choice. my choice, you know. Um, never get hung up on, I haven't got the right colour for this, because I'm constantly surprised at what lovely, unusual colours blend. Or what you don't think works. Yeah. I just had my, found my new neutral go-to use with every fabric ever thread. Go on. It's a very pale mauve, almost grey, but it's definitely ah. mauve. Honestly, it goes with everything. Yeah. Yeah, I can believe it. So when you're doing quilting something where it's all different colours, so it is... Oh yeah, yeah I never change Because it's colour. not pink, it's not blue, it's not grey, it's not white, it's a very, very pale mauve. I bought 10 mils of it, that's it. Never was it, it a bargain? No, it was just I no, wanted, I wanted loads of it. I discovered this colour and I thought, thread. that's yeah. it. No, quilting so everything. I've just positioned that, all right, and uh, kind of overlapping a little bit. Raw edges pointing outwards, and then I've just basted it to the top. Same principle as when I'm bag making: pin in, pin out as soon as possible. Oh yes, you don't so need pins in. So they're not left behind. Like me. Right. Um, so I've got that done now. Okay, and I've got my little. Mm. Um, so this is going to be. It'll. 
point upwards, obviously, when, when the whole thing's put together. So what I'm going to do now is put my front and back together, right sides together, and I'm going to clip those together. Now I'm going to use Wonder Clips for this. Oh, well we have those on at eight o'clock. I was saying if, if I had to say five accessories that I love, so mm -hmm. not normal stuff like your machine and your scissors, but other things, that would be in my five. Yeah, they are super useful, aren't they? I never use them for what a lot of people buy them for, which is holding binding onto a quilt. I never use them for that. Because um, I don't well, pin my binding on. Well, no, I, I use them because I always hand sew my binds so I can see it from both sides. Mm -hmm. What else? And I use them for circular things. Okay. I mean, bag making all the time. So if I'm putting a circular bottom in, I use them. Yes. They're really good for the top of coffee packets as well. Oh. And biscuits. So very good. You know. What a lot of people don't realise with their wonder clips is the flat side is the bit that goes on top. So not coloured side like that, which is the sort of natural inclination, but flat side, because the flat side actually has increments on it yes. for measuring your seam allowance. So depending on where you place them, and you can then use that inner line as your sewing line. Super useful. Now then, I'm going to sew this together. Um, a quarter of an inch seam allowance okay. or thereabouts. Um, I'm just having a look for a stitch towards the right. I'm not going to change my foot, so we'll just go with that. You can always change the position of your needle, or mm. a lot of the time on a straight stitch, by just using the stitch width adjustment. Okay. So if you um, increase the width of your stitch, it will generally move your needle over to the right and give you a narrower seam allowance. Mm. And if you make your stitches narrower, it will swing the needle to the oh, left, okay. making so you your seam allowance wider. So I'm going to stitch forward and back just to secure. And then I'm going to sew all the way around the top edge. So I'm going to leave the bottom edge of my um, uh, tea cosy open. Otherwise, I won't be able to get my tea cosy in. These would make lovely gifts, wouldn't they, as They well? really would. They really For would. Christmas. Although, when I was writing my very first book, and it was all about sewing things for your home, my publishers made a point of saying to me, no tea cosies. And I said, why not? Mm. And they said, because your book will be sold in America, and Americans just don't understand the concept of the tea cosy. Oh, really? As generally. Do they have a coffee <laughs> cosy? But they, they, I mean, maybe so. But not tea cosies. No. Hot tea. Mm. Right, we've got a question. Um, <laughs> learn something every time I watch Stuart. You. Oh. Well, bless you. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. <laughs> You're my new morning addiction. When quilting a multicoloured quilt, what colour thread would you suggest? Oh, that's a great question. And mm. thank you very much for saying that. Um, you will get bored of me eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be someone's addiction. It is, thank you. Um, well, now, multicoloured threads. My favourite neutrals for quilting multicoloured um, quilts. quilts. Like, I love bright yellow and I'm talking like sunshine yellow mm. that looks amazing on really lovely bright jewel colors um, I also love bright bright magenta pink so if you're mm. quilting something which is all like lovely bright colors even if you've got some neutral in there some black some white whatever something like that really bright um, jewel color looks okay. amazing wow if I'm doing something like that's more kind of antique um, say like if, for example it was a log cabin and it's loads mm. of kind of rich antique deep reds and mustards and deep greens and blues and purples that kind of and then tans and beiges I would use a nice warm tan okay. for quilting the whole thing because what I don't want in that situation is I don't want something that's so dark that it kind of screams against my light, my lights. Oh, okay. See but what I you mean. don't mind something darker mm. than my lights, a bit darker, but you don't want to go so dark that it absolutely shouts. Yes, I see. What now, you, you mean, might yeah. think that if you were doing like really bright jewel tones against a white background, 
then any colour would scream against that. But it really doesn't. So long as you don't go into something that, you know, something that from a distance looks black, don't use that. Oh, OK, so even yeah. if it's like navy or charcoal, look if it looks spidery. black, it will look black. Yeah, yeah. you want, I, I would just go for something mid-toned, but, but choose your colour, basically. A lovely mm. bright colour would be nice. So I've sewn around those edges now. I did just reverse sew at the beginning and the end just to, you know, keep everything nice and secure. You can just see the outline of Daisy. I can see Daisy. <laughs> Daisy. So I'm going to turn this through to the right side now. You could give it a press at this stage if you want to. I'm not going to bother. It doesn't really need it. But you do want to just make sure you smooth out those curves. OK. So there we go. Gorgeous. It's looking all right, isn't it, so Lovely. far? I've got a little uh, ta uh, tab at the top, lifting on and off the teapot, both sides. Mm, nice bit of cross-hatching. It works cross really well, that, because it's such a, the cow cream is such a traditional thing with the traditional quilting pattern. Yeah. It looks lovely together, doesn't it? And you see a lot of quilters are nervous about stitching through a motif. Mm. So, for example, this could be a plique, couldn't it, on a quilt, or it could be just that you've um, pieced a star and then on a background yes and so this is why there's this tendency for outline quilting and then doing something different in the star but i mean actually treating the whole block or the whole quilt as yes, one single one canvas because actually yes there's texture in there but we all still see that there is a cow creamer yeah. on a denim mm. background and the further I know, and away I think because when you, you see when the... people would do long arm quilting, they do do the whole thing, don't they? It is a pattern across the whole quilt. Often, one yeah, piece. absolutely, and it looks amazing. Yeah, and it doesn't detract from the pattern, and we we think it's going to, but um, no, sometimes it's just about that kind of commitment. So I'm just going to cut out the linings now. So for a tea cozy, you only need to put the sort of padding one layer just between the two is that enough well you could put two layers of batting if you wanted to um especially if you didn't have thermalam okay I mean, if you're using thermalam then one layer is enough or or um what's the other one that i can never remember the name of insole bright insole bright thank yeah. you that's the sort of crispy one yes that's the one that's like a space suit well it has metal through it doesn't it so it when does. you move it it's it has a little crispy. Do not put that in the microwave. Don't put it in the microwave. No, no. In fact, you you mustn't ever put any kind of batting that's got um, so like eighty twenty can't go in a microwave because twenty percent of it is polyester. Oh, okay. It'll melt. Um, and any cotton batting that's got scrim. So scrim is the glue or resin that holds the fibres together, it'll always say on the packet with scrim or without scrim. If it's with scrim, that is also a resin, a plastic resin oh, okay. that holds the layers together. So again, if you microwave that, it will melt. Right. No wadding there in the you microwave. Go. Um, you can get waddings that are specifically for microwavable products. Yeah. So like, you know, the bags that you microwave potatoes in. No. Have you seen those? No. Yeah, you can get like, um, you can make bags for warming tortillas or for, um, uh, you know, microwaving your jacket potatoes. In a bag. I just chuck it, them in the microwave. Well, so do I. What's the point? I don't it, know. Does it must, well, it must, there must be a point, wasn't there? Uh, there isn't always. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes it really is just because somebody thought, what can I make with this fabric? Oh, okay. I, just I think know. there must be yeah, no. a point. No. Yeah, I guess maybe you don't have to hold the potato. I just put it on the... Yeah, but I just get hold of the potato out of the microwave. Oh, it's only hot. <laughs> <laughs> I only ever start my jacket potatoes. Yeah, no, I try not to because they're so much better. In the, three hours in the oven is so much better than a microwave, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But I often forget the three hours. Now then, I'm going mm. to... You know, instant hunger. I need a jacket potato. When do yeah. I need it? Now! Um, then a microwave one is Well, yeah, and then nothing. it is, but if you can, because you get a really nice thick edge to it. Well, the, my favourite part of a jacket potato is the skin. Is this, I know. Oh, yes. And when I see people leaving back. I like to scoop out a jacket potato and then mash it with something. Oh. Then put it back in. Oh. Butter, sour cream, salt and pepper, chopped spring onion. Corned beef. Corned beef. 
Lovely. Honestly, honestly, corned beef. I do love corned beef. Mashed inside the jacket potato and then put back in is one of the best things in the world. If you've just tuned in, welcome to Saturday Kitchen. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm what's, James Martin. What's your favourite jacket potato filling? I just like a plain lentil doll. Plain one it's is mine, it? Yeah. Oh, yum. Out of choice. Yum. Right, so <coughs> I've sewn the lining in exactly the same way as the outer. Mm. Okay, right sides together. I'm not going to turn this through to the right side. What I'm going to do now is actually, I've got my hand inside like a glove puppet, and then I'm going to put it inside. It's the easiest way to insert a lining. Just put your hand inside it. And then the next job is to line up the side seams. I'm going to go back to my clips now. You see, I'd use the clips for that. So we were just for sure. talking this way. What would you use your clips for? Yeah. But um, they are good for well, layers. They are. Anything where you've got like thickness. Because the Cause pins do break. I was amazed. I'm, they are quite brittle. They can break. They? And, and also as well, just pushing pins through really thick layers it just tends to distort everything yeah. as well. So what I'm doing here is just evening out the fabric. Um, I started by clipping my two match points. So this mm. is the same for anything I'm ma making. Um, I always clip the match points first, which is generally seams where they meet. Then I'll clip in the middle and then I'll clip between those or pin between those um, points. Because that's basically where you need to, your, your matching to be tip top, isn't it? Yes. And I'm an over pinner rather than an under pinner. I do no, loads. I know I'm the same as well. Good morning. May I ask what brand of scissors you are using? They cut so well. Aren't Which they are they? The white ones. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. those the the Fiskers. Fiskers. Yeah. Function form. I love those scissors because yeah. they're actually look nice. Now they're actually really good price for a good pair of scissors. Yeah. I like them. You know, I, and I always say about scissors, they they really are not a lifetime purchase. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? Though? So, yes. so I mean, like I'll use my scissors for cutting whatever I need to cut. Mm. You know, I mean, I'm not ridiculous with them. I don't cut tin cans open. No, no. But you know, I you do use my dressmaking scissors for interfacing and for yes, yeah, absolutely. paper sometimes, mm. because there's nothing in modern papers that will blunt your scissors any quicker than fabric will. Right, okay. It was in, the, yeah, I mean, I, I read about this, the technology now. Yes, I thought the whole thing was you couldn't use your fabric scissors for paper. Back in the day. Back in the oh. Because paper was kind of coarser and would blunt the scissors more right. quickly. What I'm going to do now, I've got that all pinned together or clipped together. Okay. I'm just going to go around really close to the edge now and stitch those layers because I pin and then I get rid of the pins. So this is a bit of machine basting. Okay. The older I get, the more old school I become. By the time I get to 60, I'll probably be hand basting You probably everything. will be, yes. But I do that as well. And, you know, only because I've made... I've put layers together before and then had to unpick because one of them is shifted and I really hate unpicking. I agree. I would rather pin, tack, all of that with an unpick. I agree. I believe, you know, for everything that we make, there is a, an, a fixed price that must be paid <laughs> yeah. in time and yes. you're going to pay that price one way or another. Yeah, that's true. So... And I'd rather pay it not undoing what I've done. Right. It's but, like a lot of the modern sort of quick piecing methods, you know, for things like half square triangles, that you then have to square up every single <laughs> half square triangle. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not a time saver then, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I know <coughs> you end up then with very, very accurate half square triangles, but if you practice your sewing and you kind of, you know, improve mm. your accuracy, you can actually make those triangles perfectly <laughs> first time. Now then, um, one of the tips that Debbie gives is to add a few hand stitches inside to hold the lining to the outer. Okay. Yeah. So you could do that. I'm not going to do it now because I just want to quickly get on to the final minutes. bit of the binding. Exactly. How does that happen? So the bottom layer now is bound. Okay. I know how does it happen really. It's amazing. 
So we're going to have this binding oh, that's, that's really going to works go. It's nice on that navy, doesn't isn't it? Isn't that lovely? Absolutely beautiful. So smart. So um, now various different ways of putting binding on. I guess the very best way, if I'm being perfectly yeah, honest. Yeah, let's go levels of yes. perceived best way. Exactly. Um, would be to open uh, that binding out um, and stitch it on. Yeah. And then fold it around to the back. See so what I mean? Mm. Yeah, as if we were binding in dressmaking or something like that. But just to finish this off nice and quickly, I'm going to machine it front and back at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> so what I'm going to do here, just actually, just to to neaten one end, I'm just going to fold it in half. I'm just absolutely rubbish at that. Are you? I always miss the back. Well, when you're making, you buy your... Um, Which I find very frustrating. I just always miss it. And then I have to go along and hand stitch all the bits I've missed. Yeah, I mean, if you Why prefer it, just hand stitch the whole thing well, down. Hand stitch it, um, but what you can do is when you fold your binding, is don't fold it in half. Yeah. Fold it slightly off centre so that the back of the... Um, binding is slightly wider than the front and then if you're sewing near to the uh, edge on the front you're guaranteed to catch the back because it's wider because it's what yes I certainly mean but this is just a quick finish so that we can we can have something finished at the end isn't it I know it's lovely but I, you know I'm thinking so you could do it's like you say for your Christmas breakfast table how lovely but you could make all of the different items on here give them all as a gift or you can give them a separate thing somebody yeah, can have you the oven somebody can have the tea cosy that would be really table. nice wouldn't it that would be it would make a lovely gift yeah. actually um, well because we've got the choice of the four as well so it will go with somebody's kitchen and they are just classic aren't they yeah they are though they're all beautiful i like that i like each of them i mean i love the blue and white i was yeah, instantly I drawn to this um because i have a lot of white white china as well just plain white china um the blue has been the most popular has it yes okay so then well i'm just going to cut the red off there now um is I just want to deal with the end of it. Okay. So this is a little bit of a sort of cheaty way to finish it off rather than um, measuring or anything like that. But what I like to do is just overlap it. So I'll just trim that off, do you see? And that's why I folded the edge so that this can actually go right over the top of all of it. So you've got a little folded edge. It's it's good enough for me. It's fine. Do you know it? what it's I mean? It's a tea cosy. It's a tea cosy. Isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It it's is. Not the edge of a ball gown. No, it's it's it's, it's definitely not the edge of a ball gown. <laughs> oh, we've had a picture sent in from Melissa. Lovely. I did this project some time ago. Oh, oh look. Oh look, those are smashing. Oh, that's lovely in the pink, isn't it? Beautiful. Oh, thank you for the photos. Really nice to see when people have made them. That looks gorgeous. Yeah, isn't that it? is absolutely lovely. I've just lovely. seen on the instructions there are pictures of Debbie's cow cream, as you can see the floral one. Oh, are they? Um, just in the background, and the black and white one. Ah, gorgeous. Um, yeah, and there we go. It's finished. That's amazing. How quick was that? So there's one side. Well, particularly you've made all there's of that, and we've other. been chatting. We've been chatting. Tips, reversible. There's the yeah. And it's caught the binding all the way around the outside. Mm, that's brilliant. See, honestly, I'd have to go around that and stitch all the bits I'd missed. So. I machine all my bindings on, to be mm. honest, and all my quilts. Yeah, not front and back at the same time, but what I do is I attach the double fold binding yes. to the front, turn it to the back, and then top stitch from the front in the ditch of the yeah, binding. Yeah, okay. And it just kind of holds the whole thing. So there we go. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Stuart. Welcome. And the tips that we've got have been brilliant. Loved it. Loved pleasure. it. And thank you for stepping in. That's all right. It was my absolute pleasure. The chance to have an extra hour here. I will yes. take it every Well, we time. were lucky you were here today, weren't we? We pulled into the car park this morning together, didn't we? we? Like did. almost a unison. <coughs> yeah. 
Uh, really enjoying this morning's show and all your tips, Stuart. First met you at Hampton Court show at one of your workshops. Oh, Sue, wasn't that mm. lovely? That was the very first handmade fair at Hampton Court. Oh, was it? It was, and, and we had these sort of um, huge marquees with 100 or 150 students per wow. work. I know, per workshop. But I mean, we were doing a no-sew cushion cover. Do you remember, Sue, if you still got yours? And um, it was great fun. And really, it was just a lovely opportunity to all get together and, and have a make. jolly half hour. Mm. Exactly. Nice. Um, when are you back on air with us? I am back on, I want to say, a week on Tuesday. A week on Tuesday, which is about the 6th of December, isn't it? It's mm. Tuesday, the 6th of December. Yes. Yeah, the Tuesday like and that. Wednesday. Oh, OK. Well, we will say, so, well, I won't see you then, because I think I'm on Sunday and Monday. So, but we will see you. We viewers will see you then. You Thank will. you so much. <laughs> um, so that's it from Sewing Street today. Um, tomorrow on Sewing Street will be, who's presenting tomorrow? That's day. Who's present? John Scott will be on tomorrow, and at he will be doing. Um, is it black tag deals? Okay. Um, Nine a.m. Helen Newton designs with Helen Newton. Wow, that's a long time, isn't it? Oh, that would be fantastic. Lovely to see her. Um, 10 o'clock, sewing room, must-haves. 11 o'clock, it's Christmas Gnomes with Helen Newton. And at 12 o'clock, it's all about the Elna 720 Pro Sewing Machine. Thank you for joining me on Sewing Street today. Don't go anywhere, though. Yarn Lane will be on in just a few minutes' time. You need to go on. If you're on the TV, don't go anywhere. If you are watching online or on Facebook, you need to go on to www.yarnlane.com and we'll be on there. It's all about Cyber Monday on Yarn Lane. We've got lots of products, different kits and tools and books all with special discounts. Don't forget to check out with your free PMP, put in the, um, the code in your order and you will get that discount taken off today. Um, thank you for joining me in Sew Street. I will see you in just a moment on Yarn Lane.